Dana, we have a special episode today. Yep. This is a reflection on the uh, hilarious and very interesting Celebration life. as well. Yeah, celebration. Mm-hmm. Chris Farley, two-parter. Chris Farley, obviously one of the naturally funniest person you could ever meet in your life. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a lot of his friends together and family together. And we had talks about him. And it goes to a lot of different places. Mm-hmm. And uh, we told everyone, you know, let's share some lighthearted stories. Anything you can think about him, anyone you, you want to say. And we had a lot of people call and say, can we, can we be a part of it? And it was 90% lighthearted. But now and then you can't help it. If you're talking about someone that, you know, really affected everyone's life that is on the podcast uh, that's going to be ch- chiming in, mm-hmm. you realize you can't help but get choked up at times. It's just the way it is. It was 25 years ago this month, and that is baffling to me that it yeah. was that, is that long, and there doesn't a day go by where you don't think about them. And, uh, so it's, we, it's we, try, we tried to do this respectfully. Um, we had some fun because Chris was fun, and like David said, we, we do – have people talk to to his addiction and and uh, how he died and and so we just hope you really like it. It's uh, yeah. There's a few powder. heavy moments and we got uh, you know it just kind of goes up and down. You know that's just what happens when you talk about someone. And I think this is a good Dana for younger listeners or SNL people. That just there's a lot of people I know that don't even know Chris Farley. I mm-hmm. see people that go, oh, you know Led Zeppelin, and they're like, I know his face if I saw him. I don't. I yeah. know the name. I just. I can picture him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, that's actually a band. Uh, you don't know Pink Floyd? They're like, dude, I don't even know Pink, all right? I'm like, ooh, you are young. So <laughs> it's just a way that Chris Farley is someone we just think you know, and you might not, and if you've heard about him, this is a great place to just hear the thoughts of everyone who's very tight with him, and then you'll hear about sketches you might want to look up or movies, and I think it's a good opportunity for yeah. everyone just to talk out loud. And if you know him, you get to kind of revisit. I, I feel like I know Chris better um, just after doing these interviews, uh, just hearing from all the different people who knew him and worked with him. So, so here you go. This is Adam Sandler. He uh, obviously you know Adam, and we were all on SNL together at the same time. He knew Chris in and out. Chris loved him. We had so many laughs together. And here's his thoughts. How's the, How's your act right now? You know, because did you have to do all new from your special? Uh, I did. I did about all the stand up is ain't on the special, and mm-hmm. then I do uh, the things I do from the special. I do the Farley tune. Yeah, and and then I do Grow Old with You, and I think that maybe one other song. I don't fucking remember. But uh, <laughs> I like the electric. Farley, I I just I I hadn't yes. really just objectively watched you play electric guitar in a while, so yeah. that really made me laugh. A comedian, quote unquote, is then shredding is shredding. You know, it's like that. So you did the electric on the tour, right, with uh, Chris Farley? Yes, yeah, so that's yeah. the favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun part getting the whale all the way on a guitar, but then all of a sudden finding yourself way off key and people going, "You're making it worse," and just yeah. faking it and just like grinding. It. You don't, you don't know where you are on the fretboard. Dude, remember when we played dogs? I got to shred a lead on that. That's right. While you were playing drums. When me, you, Farley, Mike Myers, everybody was doing funny shit now. Yeah, yeah. And I was on, I was on the drum, kicking it down, laying it down. And you guys would wander off. And i go, fuck these guys, man. I'm just doing boom, boom. Come back to me, you Come kept saying. Come back to me. God damn. What was uh, dogs? A sketch? Well, dogs was like a we did like a Seattle band. Yeah, oh, I, I it's like little dogs. Yeah, what do you mean? You kind of remember? It was a fucking smash. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends, what? dude. You want to hear one that I fucking laughed at the you, other day? Sketch of mine that killed motherfuckers was the uh, <laughs> Brady Bunch versus Partridge Family. Oh, it was so amazing. I saw it on Instagram or Twitter the other day. I watched the whole thing. I go, yeah. this is hysterical. Everyone's in it. Who were you? I, I'm guessing Dana was uh, Keith Partridge. I was, I was David Cassidy, Keith Partridge. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Spade was buried in the fucking drum set as like one of the baby fucking partridges. And then I kept sticking my head like when, when Dana was talking, I'd find the camera on the side like this. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you am still in this. <laughs> you are. That's funny, man. If you ever listen... Accidentally, you listen to the 70s on uh, XM radio and they play a Partridge family tune. They're all incredible. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. They got the harmonies are perfect. They are irresistible bum, pop. Bum, 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 oh, it's so bum, good. Bum, 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 you know, bum, bum, I had one line in that bum, sketch, bum, Adam, bum, bum. and I say it, <laughs> and they don't even give me a courtesy close up. I watch my phone. I go, what the fuck? They didn't even cut to me. You just hear me in the back go, hey man, we gotta get this next tune out, and I'm like, that was me, dude. Oh, and Bar- I was- <laughs> Barley was, was Ruben Kincaid. Oh. We're blocking that, David. And Lauren was screaming, stay wide. <laughs> stay wide. Stay <laughs> wide. <laughs> Barley was too- Ruben Kincaid, and he was just nodding like, yeah, this is a good sound. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much ham. Too much ham in one space. We've got to stay uh, wide. Uh, yeah. Too many showboaters yeah. looking for the lens. <laughs> By the way, oh, Dana, yeah. when Sandler, I have to say, to start off this Farley stuff, Adam's um, Farley song, I'm glad you kept it in because it's so good. There's more pictures in it. Audience is totally like- You could never gut, not do that song. Gut punch. They don't even yeah. know what's coming. It's funny and it's sad. And then yeah. it's everyone just like stops in their tracks and goes, oh my God. Because, you know, they're yeah. laughing the whole night and yeah. they get hit with that thing. And then everyone walks away going, that's the best thing in the world. And maybe that's it's indelicate thing. to say, but it's actually, it's a very nice tune. That and it's a great yeah. song. It's yeah. like a really it's, sweet, the chord changes and the melody. It's just yeah. it's a good, good it's song. It's very Neil Youngy. Very Neil Youngy. Yeah, a lot of Bubba. G's and A minors. and <laughs> Exactly. G, E minor, D. Go <laughs> down a lead. Move on. No, freaking, uh, 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 they they just love seeing Farley up on the screen. I mean, yeah. the place goes bonkers every time you say his name. It's so nice. And can you guys, when you see it, even though you've done it a lot, I mean, every every night I assume there's just a little bit of a lump in your throat or it just gets a mo- You can't never get away from that feeling, right, with the pictures of Chris? I, and You're right. You're right. It, it, well, when we first would do it three years ago, whenever whatever we'd be on the road back, when we first started playing Farley's tune, I would uh, – uh, uh, get watered up uh, uh, and mm. and shake voice o- almost every night. Mm-hmm. Now, now that I've already done it, and um, uh, I like the crowd uh, knows it's coming and stuff. It's not. I don't have that same like I'm gonna cry right now. But when they cheer for him, mm, it makes you, you cry. That, that's when you tear up. You go, oh, it's so fucking great, man. That they still go like that. Oh yeah. Shit. Or what he meant to their life and uh, the vi- the visuals up there when they see Farley and see all the insanity. And I literally, I don't, I probably say maybe 10 good references of what he did, maybe 15. And then you go, well, there's actually about fucking 100 more. And he was yeah. only on the show for what, four or five years? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I do believe he's got the best. And I, I've, I said it to, uh, Chris Rock a minute ago, the best, best of tape, just for sheer power, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, I don't know the time, because I left in 93, and, you know, he'd, he'd done the Patrick Swayze one, but then, you know, Van Down by the River and others, there just was an explosiveness and a sweetness. Uh, it was just a one-off, yeah. Chris, you know? Wow. The whole world was pulling for every movie made. Uh, yeah, he he was ridiculous. I, I I you know, boys, we're supposed to come up with like one story to tell about Chris, right? That's great it, if you have one. Yeah, I I don't know what to say because I got I got a lot of them I wouldn't say because he they're yeah. fucking bananas. But but uh but um, it's it's funny. I just uh, Hurley he just told me a funny one because I said, what am I going to talk about with Farley? I, I've already said everything. Yeah, and he goes and he goes. I remember one time. It's not really. It's not really like a <laughs> great Farley story, but he goes. I remember one time. Uh, it was like the show was right about to start, and I was running somewhere. And I go, "Where are you running to?" And Hurley, he goes, "Oh, I'm going to find Farley." I go, "Oh yeah, what are you going to tell Farley?" He goes, "Oh, I was going to tell him to take it down a little bit in this one part of the skit." And I go, and he's and Hurley, he goes, and you put your arm around me, and you said, "Don't do that." <laughs> Hurley goes, oh, why, why, why not? I'm just one. He goes, he said, I go, for your own safety. <laughs> don't, don't tell Farley. Because t- then he's going to go qu- five times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Five times bigger. And then he's also going to fucking hate you the rest and of the He's going to kill you and anyone around you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I remember that. By the way, that Farley song, Adam, I went in the dressing room every night, all five shows. 
I remember. Oh, oh yeah, you, well, you you didn't want to cry or you didn't Well, want to- it just gets me off guard, even one line from it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know yeah. which one, but any of them. So I, I oh, think. I, I when, say that, that I miss watching you fuck with Spade. The, yeah, the- that one's a tough one. Um, yeah, there's great. a lot of them where I, once I just hear the beginning, it's such a cool guitar beginning. I go, oh, no, that's it. And then I go in the back just almost by uh, yeah. reflex. I just go, I'm just going to go back here because. I don't want to get into it and I don't, and I am, I'm still a little immune to it. Like you are, like you're saying, but it yeah. just, it just, you can't help. Plus the song is so like hauntingly well done yeah. that uh, all of it. And I don't see the pictures for sure, but I know you got one in there of Norm now, which is cool. Yes. Oh man, Dana, at the very mm. end, Jeez. I say, uh, I wish you were still here. You And I said, you, and I say, and you, me and Norm, we're getting on a plane to go shoot Grown Ups 3, right? And but we have this shot. Uh it's from Billy Madison and it's and it's Chris and uh Norm sitting next to each other oh. eating sandwiches on the side of a bus and and there and Farley's just laughing his balls off being a nut as the bus driver <laughs> and, and Norm <laughs> looks like he's smiling along with him. But yeah. I think we have a fucking Norm always loved Farley beyond oh, anything. Yeah. Like, well, God, man, he would always just phrase shit so nice about how great Farley was and mm-hmm. how, how how about when fucking Farley would be doing a skit in in some shit part of 8H where you're not supposed to like a, the bad part where you, they don't hear you as good and visually yeah. and under the bleachers, it, under the bleachers, whatever. And you'd hear his fucking voice blasting out and yeah. destroying yeah. it. Not, nothing could stop him. He had such that a gear. good voice. And we were talking about the when, with that voice when he would play Distress for laughs. I did a sketch once with Chris, and it was such a good sport. I don't know who wrote it, but he's like a fan of Ross Perot. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm the greatest. I don't care. You know, he's like, well, you know. <laughs> so he won my autograph or something. But at some point, Ross Perot <laughs> says something like, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm your king. I'm, I'm whatever. And so Chris got on all fours. And I was riding him, and then he's doing his far, and I'm going, go, picky boy, go, picky boy, and I'm spanking his ass, and he's so committed. He just blew the roof off with just being under distress. I can't, you can't, I cannot mimic his energy or that power of that gear he had, man. Fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, Adam, I think you would uh, understand this when, People just in the last year or so asked me when he did that Chippendale sketch, you know, how could you let that happen because of he was took his shirt off and stuff? And they go, that's so rude that you would make fun. They go, why didn't you stop that? I go, first of all, you think I'm going to stop a guy from doing a sketch that's going to blow through the roof? Like I'm going to go and I'm a I'm a feature player. He was a cast member. It was very Uh new. It was his fourth Uh show. And it didn't even, how about it also didn't cross my mind. All I thought was this sketch is going to fucking crunch. And yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It did, but I'm like, that's not my place. I'm supposed to go yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, Oh, this is going to ultimately hurt you and break your heart. And yeah, you never thought like that. You just, cause he was, he was so comfortable with taking the shirt off. <laughs> and and everything flat. else off. Yeah. <laughs> and and oh. taking all his clothes off and fucking being uh, uh, loose and. He, he, yeah, yeah. Looking back at it, I'm, uh, you go, oh, shit, he was in a lot of pain and that was the way he was dealing with it. Maybe, I don't fucking know. But uh, he, 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 there wasn't one part of you that you'd be like, oh, I don't know, Chris. It's yeah, no longer, exactly. I don't know if that's going to make you feel good. I, I don't think at that point that Chris was much heavier than a, a lot of guys in the audience. <laughs> he really, was so truly, at, truly. I mean, he was heavy, but he was so fucking athletic in that sketch. Yeah, yeah. He was moving, and, and he was just an athlete uh, who was... I, he. We were at Mohawk one time for a weekend. Mohawk, yeah. we talked. Our That's retreat, so funny. yeah. Our retreat, the best. Yes. And <laughs> he was the funniest part of that always. But, but uh, we were playing football. He fucking grabbed me one time, and like we weren't playing tackle, but... He grabbed me and like pretended he was going to tackle me and every fucking vertebrae popped in my body. And I was just like, good God, he grabbed me so hard yeah. and squeezed. Me. And uh, yeah, he was, he was a, he was a brawler. Remember when a- Jay Moore kept saying I could out wrestle you. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I would not get involved in this. And then Jay Moore, they were by the elevators on uh-huh. 17 on a writing night, of course, when everyone's doing anything but right. And then, uh, <laughs> Jay Moore and, and Farley's getting so mad because he goes, I could take you 
And then <laughs> I think Jay Moore goes at his legs and trips him down and yeah. pins him like right away because he wasn't ready. And then yeah. he crawled on the elevator and it shut and Farley started screaming. And Jay's like, <laughs> I pinned you. And it cut, and he went bananas because he got oh, pinned. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, get away from Farley because he's going to kill the next person he sees. <laughs> Whoever walks down the hall, he grabs the Lord. He <laughs> Down. Just snaps Marcy in half. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he told me a story one time. I don't have know the exact th- thing, but uh, I was in Madison one time with him, and then uh, he just talked about this story. He goes, "I said, hey, we were talking about fighting or something. He got in some fights and shit. He goes, and he pointed to the spot we were walking. He goes, well, I." Uh, me and the boys uh, did a number of some fella right there one time or something <laughs> like that. I said, oh, really? What happened? He goes, ooh, well, let's see. I think that fella said something bad about my sister. And I couldn't have any of that. Something like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Favorite guy. laughs> I like the idea of having boys. Me and the yeah. boys decided, <laughs> uh, I want to have some boys. <laughs> We gave him a whooping. Yeah. We didn't take uh, kindly to that kind of uh, interaction with our younger sibling, you understand. And it was a shallow grave. We did not dig it too deep because we actually wanted the police to find him and interview us <laughs> and our boy because we know how to tell fibs in the South. I'm just going to do that character for the rest I of like the- it. I like well, that. You have to understand. You got to understand. Now, Adam Sandler is what you call a superstar. There are stars and then the superstars. And <laughs> megastars, now that's a Beyonce and these other kinds of people. They do stadiums <laughs> on multiple nights, a Billie Eilish and what, what have you. But Adam Sandler is a bona fide superstar. But a megastar is another level. But I He's never, I never He's bet against him. Never bet against <laughs> him. Jeez. He's been working towards it. <laughs> He's, mm-hmm. he's graduating from Sheds, and he's going to be doing stadiums <laughs> in Berlin next time you look at that boy. Yeah, he he loved Adam, man. Loved Adam. He was like in awe. The guitar. Actually, one of the best things he did was Lunch Lady Land. Oh, my God. That was amazing when he was the Lunch Lady. Yes. we. You know what's funny, boys? We did a video for MTV together first. We did a video. Oh, for Lunch Lady Land? Yeah, Lunch Lady Land. He played the Lunch Lady in the video. Uh, it's somewhere. And uh, we did like a cool, like uh, a neat looking uh, uh, video that w- kind of was like in the style of uh, Pearl Jam or something like that. Back back in the day, we took like like the Lunch Lady video very serious. And Farley was doing the funniest shit in that. He, I think he came by for, I think it was a one day video shoot. And he was yeah. uh, a madman. And then... Uh, and then he did it on the show and kicked ass. That was the best thing about being in a skit with Farley. You just felt safe. Yeah. You're like, well, he'll fucking kill. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, let's let, let whatever. This thing's going to be just fine. He'll, he'll destroy and I'll fucking ride the wave with him. It was like being in the perfect wave. He would set a fucking uh, a, a, a nice, whatever the fuck it was. He'd set this great pick for you. You'd be mm. able to throw a, a layup in and go like, hey, I scored. But meanwhile, he did all the work, you know? <laughs> and he would love to unprofessionally try to make you laugh or anyone laugh oh, yeah, in, in the yeah, middle of the yeah. scene. When he gets close to your head and he clo- crosses his eyes or something, and because he goes, yeah, yeah. Davey, I can cross my eyes, but the camera only sees one eye, and so I can cross them and they'll never <laughs> see it. And I'm like, God, what are you planning? Because <laughs> he thought the ultimate <laughs> victory is if you laughed, you know? He's always oh, telling yeah, his yeah. magical power. But he almost broke, well, he almost Almost broke you in Pepper Boy with his. He had one line. Well, thank you, Pepper Boy. Oh, yeah. It was a ten-minute sketch. We were out there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You. yeah, he played it. He went big on that. I wish Hurley he told him to take it down on that one. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he, but, crazy. he he did this other one. What the fuck else did he? Oh, yeah, we used to do that cor- corn skit, Zaggots. And uh, oh and yeah, yeah, was, yeah. He dressed like an old woman and I was an mm-hmm. old man and stuff. And he would always, he'd always grab my knee in, in the middle of his lines or try to shake me and fucking, I couldn't help but laugh. I just, I laughed every time I was with him. I laughed during Billy Madison so much when he was the bus driver. We had like the light was going down. <laughs> we had a few, few minutes to shoot a scene and he was out of his mind. 
staring at me in the, in the face and going, <laughs> whatever he was doing. And that I, and the camera was on the left side. I just kept making my head stare way off to the right. Cause I, I couldn't ruin the take, but, uh, I was laughing the whole time. Oh, when he, I told you on the tour when he goes, that Veronica Vaughn, he like stops yeah. you with his hand yeah. and then yeah. you're kind of looking away smiling because <laughs> I go, were you going to laugh? Because he's going, it's one piece of ace. <laughs> one piece of ace. <laughs> and you're like, from experience, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And, and, <laughs> does that for a half hour. Oh, yeah. When he was turning dark red on the, on the bus and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's hard, hard not to. Every story about him, you're, you're smiling. He, he was ferocious, but even his bad moods. Looking back at him, you laugh your ass off with how viciously bad a, a mood he would get, and even he would laugh at it when I <laughs> when I, I remember I'd come in and and you too, David. You you yeah. you guys fucking had more than oh, anybody. Yeah. But I would call him uh, call him on a bad mood. I'd be like, Is something. What happened? Are you all right? You know, like if you called him out on it. And then he would just break into an uncontrollable laughing fit. Me like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was being a little pissy there. Oh my god! One time he left me the most violent voicemail, and it was terrifying. And I went to work, and he goes, "David, did you get my joke voice?" I go, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what?" <laughs> Joke voice, but he's so psychotic. And he goes, <laughs> David, don't tell Lauren. Oh, <laughs> I, I, go, I go, I'm not telling anyone. I went right to the fucking police. Dude, <laughs> me and him used to do fucking uh, prank phone calls together. Oh, in, yeah, uh, yeah, in, yeah. In Bernie's voice, in Bernie's uh -huh. voice. And uh, and do it for for uh, like an hour at a time. Mm -hmm. and just in the office. <laughs> Yeah, just like sitting in our office, calling random hotels, setting up. We used to, we used to call like, uh, <laughs> we used to call like, like uh, hip uh, places like, uh, what the fuck like was it? Columbus or those kind of like cool places. Or, yeah, yeah, like the and, Rainbow and Room. <laughs> it, yeah, whatever. The, yeah, just places that cars would go mm -hmm. to, and we would fucking as Bernie uh, tell them to set up. Uh, we need to tape them tonight, you know. <laughs> yeah, and we, we would say, say some superstars coming. You know, uh, I need to table for Madonna tonight for 25. And they'd be like, 25? <laughs> At 9 o'clock. And they would be like, oh, geez, that's right in the heat of everything. That's a lot of people. I am, if you want me to tell Madonna, she can't fit your place. You got it. No, 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 we didn't say that, sir. We're just, uh, that's a lot of people. We need to table for three now. And she likes green beans. <laughs> Have them ready. And that yeah, is, I, that's Bernie Brustein, the talent manager of all Hollywood, who's a very us, a big Santa us. Claus guy, who would, if you yeah. had to knock heads together, was a huge person. Yes. That's a funny take on her. We uh, are lucky enough to have Mrs. Farley on, uh, Chris's mom, and his oldest brother, Tom. Um, and they're going to tell us a couple of things we might not have known about Chris. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Tom! What? Hey! Uh, quit, <laughs> don't scare Mrs. Farley. Hey, oh. David. Come on, mother. Oh, I can't. Hi, Mrs. Farley. How are you, hey. David and Dana? Hi. You look, you look very Farley. nice. How you are look you? adorable. <laughs> I want to I want to meet your dermatologist. Oh, you look you incredible. Like you wouldn't like him. Oh, uh, <laughs> now, he faded after he worked on me. <laughs> he faded. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So what's up? You're the only ones that can do a split screen and I can't see either of you. I know. Um, but anyway, no, there you go. Don't hurt your neck uh, and I won't hurt mine. By the okay. way, Mrs. Mrs. Farley, Dana, is the only one that sends me a Christmas card every year. She's so oh. sweet. Birthday. Yep. Birthday. It was either a Christmas card or a birthday, <laughs> David. You had a 50-50 <laughs> chance and, and you blew it. <laughs> no, no, I was tricking her to see if she still got her wits no, about I her and don't. you knew it. I don't it. at all. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't forget either one of you. You've got your marbles. I can tell just by looking at mm -hmm. you. Uh, I'm going to start before I and rev Tom. you guys up. Right. And you don't even have to rev up and really do anything. Okay. But, uh, 
I, when Dana, you know, I always eat early and I always eat quickly when we go out. So we always tell the story about Mrs. Farley that we all went to dinner once and, um, we were all piling into the sushi re- or whatever restaurant or the, or the Ivy or something. And we're all sitting down and, and I go to the waitress, uh, we'll get crab cakes and maybe a Caesar. And she goes, Oh, we're ordering. And then she goes, I, I need a menu. I haven't even sat down yet. <laughs> I relate but to that. that. So every time I start to order, someone goes, oh, we're ordering. We're ordering so soon. Be- so soon. Because we would have normally we'd sit for 15 minutes, talk, yeah. get the menus. Yeah. But of course, I was rudely called out and uh, I was rudely ordering. And then she was very sweet to say, oh, I'll order. I just don't. I'm not seated or I don't have a menu also. But now <laughs> you should know that David now he calls the restaurant while he's driving there. And I have done that. So the food is at the table when he arrives. Oh, David, that's smart. that's like that's like something Meghan Markle might do. When a man's got to <laughs> eat, a man's got to eat. Absolutely. David Spade, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Well, moms knows that when it's go time, when it's time to eat, you oh. know, in our family, and the food Listen. comes. So, Listen, uh, I'm so I patented a new product on Shark Tank. It's called the Yuck Bag. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we know up. all about the Yuck Bag now. John <laughs> Hello, told sharks. us. Oh, what man. I want to ask Mrs. Farley because you have five five children and you're feeding them. What was your go to meals that you would serve your family? Anything in a can. Oh. Casser- oh, oh, in cans? I can't. We yeah. had we had five in our household as well. Yeah. Fifteen hundred square feet, five kids, yep. four boys, and a and a daughter. Oh, and yeah, there was a lot. If my mom was busy and I had a friend come over, she would say pancake batter in the fridge for dinner. Help yourself. Yeah, perfect. So we'd have pancakes perfect. for dinner sometimes. My mom was I'm- big on fish sticks. Oh, I like those too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like those too. And it, well, uh, the batter kind of. I didn't quite go with the pancakes because I was right. never left the stove. Mom was the casserole from the casserole era. <laughs> casserole, yeah. like macaroni era. and oh. cheese casserole. Tuna, tuna, tuna casserole. casserole. Oh, oh yeah. we had the I have yeah. hamburger helper. Oh, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it was gone before I even sat down. I have to get I know. back up again. You're the skinny one because you're working and then you get the you get the last... <laughs> dibs yeah. in the food and it's, there's well, no and way there's any left was there a fire sale in our house there was if we had sweet cereal like corn pops or sugar smacks or that my brother mark we called him the human garbage disposal oh yeah he would pour the whole thing and would you it'd be a giant bowl you would do cake batter in and he would eat the whole thing so there was a race for the sweets in our household uh, well yeah, if you got to be fast if you're going to get absolutely yeah. absolutely dana i didn't know you had one one do- uh sister and four sister. brothers yeah, three older brothers, yeah. a younger sister, uh, and my dad was a high school teacher. My mom was a preschool oh, teacher, and we were very, that. barely middle class, but we had a lot oh. of fun. Oh, but we had we, baked. Uh, we go to the bakery and get the day old, and sometimes the two day old, oh. and put them in the freezer yeah. to eat. You know, French so I'm sure you guys had taste the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had a lot of. Did you have a side of beef in a freezer in the in the garage or something, no, or did you get steak? One yeah. time, Tom, my husband Tom, oh. <laughs> different, brought a side of beef home, and there was no place mm-hmm. to put it. I had a small freezer, except I the was dinner table. Out <laughs> beef like crazy. <laughs> no, we didn't have a big freezer. Yeah. So that was difficult. He just brought home a side of beef and handed you a machete and yeah, said, "You yeah, figure it out." Yeah, he said, "Go to it, mom. Go to was it." Was he good with Was he good at chores around the house, or lazy? Well, that was the problem. Like they, <laughs> they had, dad would send us all all the boys out, like go shovel the walk or rake the leaves, and it would end up with like a fight. huge fight because <laughs> somebody was yeah. There, we were oh. all coasting and slacking. Oh, so, lolly gaggers and gold oh, brickers. Yeah, gaggers. Family. we did it. We had the same thing. We'd have to go out and we would balance the tools. Oh. You know, we just had, and then when he'd come out the front door, we'd just go like we're raking, you know, yes. we balance the tools. You did that too, Tom? Yeah. Yes. That was, <laughs> we're at it, Dad. We're doing yeah. it. Yep. Four boys should have taken us and <laughs> 45 minutes. We were out there all <laughs> afternoon long. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just was, go, uh, uh, trimming, hoeing, lo- lawn mowing, all of the well, above. Oh, no. No, no lawn mowing. You no. didn't put it, that. that's a dangerous, that's, yeah. that's heavy equipment. Yeah. That's not. That would be bad. Dad was a little nervous about that power more in the in the hands of the boys. That, no, you couldn't do that one. Shoveling, not bad. 
but uh, I, we were just telling the story that Chris told me once when you were typical story driving around and uh, dad was driving all of you and he goes mom pull over I'm hungry I'm starving and you go Christopher you just ate an hour ago and yeah. your dad would go ha ha good boy <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Oh, uh, that always puzzled me because we'd have a late breakfast or something, 12 o'clock on the dot. Where's lunch? Where's lunch? And I said, you just ate. What are you talking about? But it says on my watch, it's 12 o'clock. I said, what kind of, you know, the, the mind says, I've got to eat. It's 12. <laughs> That's my mom. The cook says no. Yeah, the cook's got to take a rest. So is there anything you guys remember you wanted to say? about anything you thought of that was interesting story, funny story. It doesn't matter, anything. You know, I had a funny, I had a question. I was thinking, because mom all week was like, what are they going to ask? What are they going to ask? I'm like, you know what? I've got a question. I have a Mm -hmm. question. Like for like 20 years, we were like used to Chris's, you know, all, you know, we were, you know, that was part of our life. We were totally used to it. I'm like, my question is like, what was, what was your first impression? Like, like when this, when the, this got delivered to, into your world. <laughs> yeah, this funny. hurricane. Yeah, uh, I met him at the Omni Hotel. We were. I was a feature player writer, and I had done four shows. And I came back over the summer, and Chris and Chris Rock were hired. Uh, I, was, so I was at that hotel. I was there. I, yeah, remember that's where they put us up. Soup yeah, was like yeah. eight bucks, and Rob Schneider kept ordering, and I go, "Don't charge that to Lauren. We'll get fired immediately." So I saw, I'd heard about Chris. I heard his audition was funny. I heard he was good. And I met him that first day. And uh, we, I think we walked over together and we just gravitated. He wasn't uh, terrifying at first. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh, (laughs) that that look, yeah. He's the most lovable, like fun, happy, Madison, Wisconsin guy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we- Midwestern. Yeah, I just went over and I was in Arizona. We talked about that and we- and then we just sort of bonded, but he really took to everyone. Everyone loved, loved him right away. Uh, I think the funnier part is the people that that went to college with him, and he was a little bit of a boozy Susie, if I may be so bold. Um, and those people going, I'm sure if you took a poll, who will not make it in show business in this school? They would say, well, not him. He's not going to go anywhere he's too crazy and then he's the one that blows up the biggest they must have been mm-hmm. shocked true yeah, yeah a little but yeah but he was just so yeah he, they always talk about like they saw that he was definitely destined for something he was different but yeah something he's lot. the only cast Bye. member i remember meeting chris and was really just charmed by him and he was making me laugh. So I invited him home for dinner. My wife and I had an apartment on 84th and Broadway. I said, you've got to meet Chris. So she cooked a meal and we went over there and hung out with him. And we just, it, and for that evening, we just met charming, as you two yeah. are, Midwestern charming values and humility, you know? Um, so we just um, took a liking to Chris right away. And then as time went on, I noticed his explosive talent you know the way yeah. he could go from zero to a hundred and he had a rhythm with his voice i think he knew exactly what he was doing comedically i think very very smart very smart about how yeah. how to land yeah. jokes how how to move himself around and yeah. so yeah i was just charmed by him like i'm charmed right now yeah. Yeah. did you ever tell you the story before that omni moment that you just described what happened before that no so I was working in New York. I worked at Paris Stearns, so I had an office on Park Avenue, and Chris rolls into town, staying just up the street, and in, uh, we had lunch, and he's about to go back to the hotel, and he goes, uh, you know, I, I don't have any, you know, I don't have a paycheck yet. Can can you, you know, lend me? He was just coming off of starvation at Second City, so I'm like, can I borrow some money? I'm like, okay. So I go to my, you know, the ATM, and, and you know, the three hundred dollars I had in there, I'm like, all right, you can have. Here's one hundred and fifty. I know you're, no, you're good for it. And he goes, Dad said I should go to you know walk up Fifth Avenue. Where's that? I'm like, just right up there. Oh, so he mm. walks up, and I get a call like a half hour, forty five minutes later. It's like, yeah, Tom, I, 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 I'm gonna need more money. I'm like, what do you mean you're gonna need more money? <laughs> I'm like, I was just walking on Fifth Avenue, like Dad told me, and uh, I saw these guys playing cards. I'm like, oh. oh. No, oh, were there wow. three of them? <laughs> like, yeah. 
and they were like playing this game and everyone was winning. I'm like, yeah, okay. They're all, all together. <laughs> no, but, like, no. And I'm like, no, okay. and he goes, and some guy points me, he goes, he goes, do you know where the mm. car, you know, the card is? And Chris goes, yeah. And he goes, how much you got? And I go, oh. what did you do? He goes, I put down $150. Like the whole nut, really, you just dumped it up. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I lost it all. I'm like, okay, all right, uh, come back. I'll give you the, the other, city. I'll give you the under 150 in my account. And now walk up Madison this time. Let's- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, that yeah. is definitely like Green Acre or just a, a fish out of water. Welcome to New but York. He, he learned. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. straight sure. out of hee-haw. But, you know, th- you're, uh, Mrs. Farley, you were, you were such a good, solid person over there. I think he learned a lot and very polite to everyone. He was very sweet to everyone. And, uh, he got that from home and, right. uh, he had his things, but down deep, he was very good boy and everyone was, uh, really gravitated. Yeah. Well, he knew how to test me. That's for sure. He, <laughs> I could see through that. I could see through like that. five or five or six year old Chris. Yeah. What would he do? Would was he was he easily would he like go take a time out or oh. or would he uh, Oh no? that, that was a vacation for him, a time out. Oh. Okay. oh, sure, that wasn't any and then when I'd get these calls from, from Edgewood High or school where he was, um, they said, Mrs. Farley, Christopher's been naughty on the bus again. I said, Oh, that's bad. <laughs> and what did he do? Well, they explained and I said, Oh dear, he said, Yes, you He'll be uh, not able to ride the bus for a week. And I said, who are you punishing here? Me? (laughs) I had to drive half across town every day because of his antics. Shenanigans. 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 I like how we keep it vague. He was doing some crazy things on the bus. (laughs) On the bus. Right, right. Was but he got to into Marquette University, right? I yes, mean, so he, he got his school work square. together. Fair and square. He, he he was he could do it if he wanted. If we want, he was, yeah. yeah, he could do it. He wasn't any dummy. He could work people. Yeah, you're yeah. right. He yeah, could. he did. He yeah. would go up the host and go. Are you an AA? I am too. And I go, Chris, how many times do you have to find some common ground so you can go oh, yeah. have dinner yeah, with Sharon yeah, Stone? Yeah. He's like, I yeah. know. He just fine. <laughs> I have problems. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh boy, <laughs> mom, you don't understand me. You really don't understand me. I said, yes, I do, Chris. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. His mother wasn't born yesterday, I guess. But we had we had good times, though. Good times. Yeah, oh, good yeah. times. It was. Yes. Yeah, it was. His youth was. Fun. It really was fun. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was Usually big, time. big families. Uh, you guys would play games yep. and run around. If it was yep. a snowy day, I'm sure you would barrel with oh. laughter at times. Oh, and, I'd turn the furniture you know. upside down and put sheets all over it. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. We, oh, we did <laughs> all that. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> fort. The fort, fort. Does, yeah. And was there a movie like, Tom, do you remember, were there movies like we had Jason the Argonauts and certain movies that would come on television and we'd all gather around, or Wizard of Oz? Wizard would, of Oz, did you, yes. Wizard of Oz. Oh, was yes. Was big, yeah. So there was, he was oh, scared was easily, important. I think, though. Yeah, but oh, uh, he I was. was. He was. He, he. Well, the Wicked Witch is, was one of the yeah. most terrifying characters I, mean, I think they watched it. Uh, ten times over, yeah, I, but I was the but, bedwetter. So oh, we don't go. Uh, oh, we'll I was the bedwetter that. too. Yeah. My older, my older brother. My parents got a machine in the catalog, and they put the a plastic sheet on. He was on the upper bunk, and it had a little machine. So then, when his urine would hit the sheet, I had that. I had that. I, had that. I, had that. I, had that. I know, but he wet the bed so hard he ruined the so machine. Hard. He broke it the first. Well, he went so much he would sleepwalk, open the refrigerator door, and go pee 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 in the in the, in the fridge. So Tom, I mean, I I went to bed too, and sometimes I'd wake up, realize oh. I wet it, and then I would just get to the side yeah. of it and oh, go back to Lord sleep. Above. Yeah, yeah, I'd go to the bathroom. Lord get above, a, it was get a towel, bad. put that down. Oh. I had a lot of strategies, a lot what, of strategies. So it just meant we were deep sleepers. That's all. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, yeah, we like, were just sleeping that? very well, deep. We cut off all liquids. No liquids after six o'clock, and that didn't that work. Didn't work. I, that didn't work. No. No. Yeah. No. I. I might. Well, we, we can might have had. We didn't wet the bed unless 
<laughs> Unless, in college, <laughs> in college, for other reasons. Oh, in college, for other reasons, he he became a bedwetter later. Yeah, yeah later some of us do life. it earlier. Later in life. Either way, there's a lot of bedwetting I think going on. Sometimes it's just too about, tired to wake up. A lot of new mattresses. A lot of new mattresses yeah. in the Farley household. Yeah. You know, Mama Farley. When we were, he had he lived at the Bromley. Dana, is that where you lived? The Bromley. Yes, the Bromley. Eighty so, fourth. Eighty fourth. Moved in there and Broadway. And uh, I think Myers lived there too, and maybe Dennis. But it was a very goes, nice. Place. I live with main cast members in my building. Where do you live? What kind of <laughs> shithole do you live? He's like? always <laughs> challenging. Yeah, he's always fucking fighting me about something. But it's always just like for fun. But I go, yeah. I know. And he goes, you got to come check it out. So I go over there, and I notice there's no shower curtain. Oh. <clears throat> so the bathroom's soaking wet. And he goes, I go, do you, I go, you don't have a shower curtain? He goes, who needs that? Are you a girl? I go, well, oh, man. I mean, I I get that it's a hassle to go buy one. He goes, yeah, you want to go buy one for me? I go, no. And he goes, then there's no shower curtain. Oh, I go, he goes, yeah, unless you buy it. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. So he just has water everywhere. Bit of a slop. That's oh, all. Those little just, things. Yeah. Just a titch. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, it, yeah. it, but it was, it was enough to like, because that was so the opposite of me. I'm like. Yeah. And we had to share a bedroom. I'm like, I, oh, I, you're like the Felix and uh, Oscar. Oh, no, totally. And finally, I just said, that's enough. Like, yeah. that, find another, like, we had to, like, find, a, like, another room in the house. And he went behind the furnace that was scary, right? Oh, what, yeah. What we were that, told. That was, yeah. yeah. Yep. That was, oh, yeah. Great, he, grand, neatest, wonderful. Neatest guy in the world. No. <laughs> so, but Tom is. Tom is. So that must have been not good. Was, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was, yeah. We had all the boys downstairs. I, I yeah. always describe. I, I spent my whole life trying to like live up to expectations, fought, toe the line, all. And I look behind me, and this guy is like not only just tripping and falling over the line, but like making friends everywhere. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. I didn't. I never got that. I, right. like, I, like, <laughs> he's getting. Tom. He's failing upward Poor every time yeah. he does something like, wrong. He gets more famous, and you're yeah. like, wait, what's going I'm on? I'm dressing right. I'm studying. I'm neat, and then he's. Just the opposite and have 10 times more friends. Everyone loves them. You know, yeah. when he had that green yeah. coat, I think, and he'd go to church and he'd all, he'd always yeah. go to church. So he'd always yeah, he get did. that tie Never on. I don't care if he's coming straight from the club. You're going to church. And he would just yeah. put the tie yeah. and tight. Everything was tight. Pull yeah. up really tight. And he put an overcoat, <laughs> and a sweater and a tie. I go, God damn, how do you get so many layers you can't move? I like to feel hugged. And then he oh, would go. Oh, man. And then he'd go to church <laughs> and come back. I mean, it, he, he did look sharp, though. He'd doll up. You taught him that. He would doll up for he's dinners. He's been and layering. Stuff. The, yeah. The worst he's, thing. I know. He looked like layered Hamilton. Yeah, he's the worst He, he would always layer. That ever yeah. happened. Like, like <laughs> last year, when I sent you the Tommy Boy jacket, David. Yes. Like the worst thing I ever did. So I had Chris's Tommy Boy jacket and it was sitting in, in storage. I'm like, you know what? This is, it's just sitting in storage. This is David's movie too. So I like sent it Very out. sweet. Yes. Sent it to my son Tommy to walk it over. But before I did that, I'm like, I was, it was hanging in my, on my, on my door. I'm like, huh. And I took it off, and put it on, and I was like, damn it. I was like, it didn't fit. I'm like, now I'm the I'm the big guy. In the little coat? Like, oh, that no. little that coat. was really hard on yeah. me. Yeah. That must have been a difficult You moment. know what's funny? <laughs> I told Dana that. I said, you know, Chris, during Tommy Boy, because I have that jacket, and I really appreciate it because it's up on the wall here in the podcast room. Uh, it's cool. just like the coolest thing in the world to have the actual jacket from Tommy Boy. And, and he- uh, I, he was not that huge in Tommy Boy. I mean, right. I was pretty teensy or thinner. Big shoulders. Petite. Yeah, he had big shoulders, shoulders but yeah. even he couldn't fit. I mean, I think it was gaining more toward the end, like he gained more weight. But yeah. back then, he was sort of known as huge and fat or whatever. But he wasn't. Really. He was just kind of bigger. Big and, guy, of course, not, the word agile yeah. we've heard on everyone we've interviewed. Yeah. He's oh, very yeah. athletic. Very, Yeah, you knew that. Yeah, All he I had was. to look was his arms were massive. He was just so muscular, like huge Big muscular shoulder. arms. Like he goes this, you know. he goes like this. Hmm? Hmm? You like that? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, slip and you go, did he lift yeah. weights Trouble. or was it natural? I mean, where did he get all those muscles from? It was from rugby or, you know. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was born with big, big shoulders. Always lifting weights, too. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he was a yeah. big weightlifter. Was nice. he a wrestler? Hmm? Oh, okay. Like yeah. that? Hmm? Football, we lifted wrestling. weights a few times together at the Bromley. He came over and there was a weight room there. Yeah, yeah. he could bench a hell of a lot of weight. Really? Hey, lady. Yeah. Hey, it's oh, the lady. Yeah. Put two fifties on and 
Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. He was just organically strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. David was more. David and I are more miniature that way. You know, I don't know if I, I was, love the word miniature. Well, I was one thirty eight when I was made Wayne's World one. Whoa, I think I was one thirty eight on uh, SNL. Yeah, one thirty five club. Stop. Meeting. Stop. Go speed, boys. Go what? Well, I'm almost as much as you. <laughs> oh, well, we're men. We're tiny people. He doesn't like No, <laughs> you look tougher than me. You can fa you're fast, you can move on your feet, you can swing. You with can a swing. wooden spoon in her hand. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Would you whack them with a wooden spoon oh, your kids? Oh, or? I went through more wooden spoons and it wasn't cooking. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> was it out of the blue, Tom? And you just hear whack what I do, or we just what? No, we knew no. no we knew, knew it was, was coming. coming. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would run to the drawer yeah. and open the drawer and they go, What did you do it? We didn't do it. Sorry, Bob. Yeah. No, we did nothing. We did nothing. And I raised the spoon. So no. you were the authoritarian in a way. I mean, you were not afraid to, to get no, those kids I was in not line. Afraid. No. Yeah. No. Dad was the young dad was just the voice. You know, you yeah. just he was Christopher. He yeah. would extend you like he would stop your blood from just by yelling. You know, the just voice. The right. Voice the was voice. Enough to, like, he was stop very respectful track. of the dad. Oh, yes. He was oh, very. Yeah. yeah. Chris well, was were not. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. Well, it was all new to us. All the SNL and the. Oh, sure. oh it's the strangest. You no turn. idea. Yeah. Of I, that I, I, I. Yeah. It's such a strange, uh, uh, bizarre thing to happen to your son. Well, be on TV is. all of a sudden, yeah, isn't yeah. it? I mean, well, or my, your brother, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. my my uh, father, when I brought him out from um, after my mother and brother died, I brought dad over here to Madison. And um, that was in 95 or three, 93. And Chris had been on Saturday Night Live, I think, since 91, a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, something like 90, that. Yeah. But nobody yeah. had showed it, the show to him in, in his um, nursing home in Boston. So mm. we were out here, and I said, Dad, Christopher's on television. I said, let's, let's watch a rerun here. It was during the day. And he looked, and he kept looking at the screen. He's, is that, is that Chris? I said, what's he doing up there? What's he doing up there? I said, well, he's on a show, Dad, at, uh, on television. Chump. He's yeah. a chump. <laughs> chump? I, yeah. Well, that's, he said that all, because Chris was always being Chris, and my <laughs> grandfather, my Boston Irish grandfather, would always like, you're going to be a bum. Yeah. You know, quit doing that. You're going to be a chump. You got to you know, get a real job. You got to get a job. <laughs> you got to get an education. Chris would laugh. He hysteric. He loved all. that. He loved it when yeah. Poppy would go a jumper. Yeah. Jump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think he said that when he would even have movies he would read and you know his dad your your husband Tom was yeah. not in showbiz he's just a normal guy and he goes dad what do you think about this one he goes sounds like horse shit <laughs> <laughs> like, like he'd say you're gonna jump around like a clown in this one he's like yeah and then he'd call Gervitz and go I don't think I want to do this one he's like what what you're already doing and he goes no nah, my dad didn't like it <laughs> I know but uh, but that was a good one with Poppy. He he never oh, yeah. he couldn't understand that one. Did he understand how? Did he live long enough to understand how wealthy Chris became? Because that's a different thing when the yeah. Benjamins they can't yeah. get that. Yeah, they you can't know, believe I you're know. getting paid for this stuff. That's what they can't believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, like they, they pay you to do this. It. We never well, mentioned. I it. always that that was always my thing. It was like I would see like this these skits that I've been seeing him do like Chippendales. He'd been doing that since grade school. In, you know, the, in front of really? People. I'm like dancing like that. Yeah. With a shirt off. That. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, mm -hmm. Breaking know, out. Like, yeah. you know, we that, you know, in college we had a bar and the band would go, all right, we're going to take 15 minutes break. And the, they'd go and pipe music in. And we'd look back and Chris would be the only one on the dance floor doing this, you know, doing his stuff. Not with now he's with Patrick was, Swayze. Yeah. He kept, yeah. it, you know. kept his no. pants up. He kept Sometimes, his pants yeah. up. Though. Yeah. <laughs> he did like taking his clothes off for some reason. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Would he take his diaper off as a toddler? Yes, yes. Oh, he just always taking his clothes off. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. find those all over the house. Yep. Mm, yep. So funny. All <laughs> yeah. right. Well, is there anything else you guys want to say? Yeah. We just can you yes. call me Marianne? 
Okay, not Mama well, well, Farley. I, 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 so I, I took no. David's cue, Mrs. Farley, but I, I wanted to call you Marianne. That's you, a boy. You, you Marianne, too, David. Of course, yes. Marianne. Well, well, you know, you're talking to a fellow cast member here. You oh. Know? oh, yeah, she was <laughs> on Mother's, Mother's Day, Day special. Yeah. What was the uh, sketch that you did with Chris? Yeah. Did you do a little dance or a little, a little Did you have to do an introduction or something? Oh, that was, yeah. Yes, yes. We but I was that. always, when I was watching that from my side, I was like, you know, everyone was like, oh, Chris, you know, Saturday Night Live. Then you see, like, Mom and Chris, and you see, you like, you would, it was so distinct, like, where that comfort on stage and poise, like, came Mom from. was just, like, here, you know, like, came out yeah. from Madison, Wisconsin, and, like, put her on stage in SNL, and you're like, no, this is. Like, I had butterflies. Well, but, I right. you know, really had sold butterflies. It. Yeah, you got bless. Yeah. You're very funny. Until that, until the luncheon was Trump. That was that. That was a good one. Remember that? <laughs> wait, wait, was that what happened? Yeah, he yeah. was at our luncheon. Oh, how funny! I don't remember that. Yeah, Donald Trump. I, yes. Yeah, I got pictures was, upstairs of like all the all your mothers, all the mothers. It's gonna be there. huge. We're gonna have crab cakes. Go ahead. We're gonna do it terrific. <laughs> Let me tell you, Marianne, they don't make them like you anymore, and we're gonna be coming that very soon. Exactly. You're wonderful, Tom. Oh. A great older brother. I want to tell you that right now. Oh, he's, you're perfect, <laughs> Dana. You are perfect. Yeah, <laughs> he went around you, to Marianne. all the mothers, all the mothers. Uh, Let me get your I number will, uh, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked him who his hairdresser was. That was good. Oh, good. He oh, said it's a weed whacker. A, it's a secret. Oh, it's a oh, secret. Yeah. My mom, Dana, on that one, she, first of all, she loves uh, Marianne, but my I mom, love her. My mom was so excited. I think she was sick the whole week because she goes, I wasn't going to let that stop me. She goes, she broke on hives on the way home. You know, they had to get an ambulance when she got home. She was covered in hives. She was so either nervous or excited. Anyway, oh, from the Mother's takes, Day special? Yeah. Oh, so I they sat her next that. to me. I and they had to, that. yeah, remember she got yes, worse when she yes. left. Oh, yeah, so she's was, such a trooper. Oh. Her joke was she sits with me and they go, she goes, I'm Davy Spade's mom. And we, I got divorced from his dad when he was four years old. And a lot of kids <laughs> grow up thinking when their parents get divorced, it's their fault. In this case, it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice joke. Isn't that oh, funny? Man. That's a oh, good man. joke. We had the best time, and I remember your darling mother too, Dana. She oh, was Billy a Dean, sweetheart, yes. Billy, yes, yeah, oh, she yeah. she was such she was a sweet woman, a yeah, beautiful lady. You get along yeah. with yeah. everyone, though, I bet, Marianne. That was genius got, bringing those ladies together. I don't know where they, that. I don't know why they don't time. do it anymore. It was so smart. Yeah, I was surprised when I, yeah, I was surprised when I first heard it, Mother's Day special because I thought we're Saturday Night Live, we're rebels and pirates, but then it ended up being one of the greatest yeah. Yeah, segments on the show. So, so we yes. all clicked and at, stayed uh, and stayed, you know, in touch. Every yeah. Sense. Yeah, yep. Chris Rock's yep. mom was there. I remember there's yep. a lot of moms. Yep, yep. Myers. We need to have some. some I remember common. one yeah. one time uh, one, when we were practicing, we Practice. were all jammed in an elevator, and we had to go up to the second floor for some reason and mm -hmm. wait, and then come back down and rush out of the elevator. Well, we had to do that over and over, and it was one o'clock in the morning, and wow. about the sixth time. We were going up to the second floor again, and I said to the girls, it was my fault. I said, girls, we're not getting back on that elevator. That, ele <laughs> that elevator's going down without us. And it, did, and it went down, and the doors opened. And no, no mothers. And they panicked. Where are the mothers? <laughs> Where are the mothers? And they, we all laughed our heads off. We thought that was the greatest coup. Enough is enough is enough, right? So yeah. you had a little bit of rebel in you as well. Sure. Where the apple didn't fall too far no, from the tree. She's it's hysterical. Like, where it by the comes way. from, absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Well, yeah, that's great. I yeah, was that's a funny. saint. Now, come on. I now, went to on. the Sacred Heart Convent, and I, had, I was a child of Mary. I was a very sweet, wonderful girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the impression i'm yeah. getting thank you Dana. I, i'm thank coming you. to wisconsin i'm gonna book a date david and i are gonna come in there and we're yeah. just gonna hang out with you good I what's the closest to. town with an airport that could take private jets <laughs> <laughs> madison. madison my town oh madison town. yeah i'm gonna be there on tour coming up yeah. in january so know, i'll have I it come have down it. Come with him, Dana. Oh, well, Dana. we'll see. I should jump on one of these, you know. Yeah. Cause oh, I'd love I, it. I've done stand up a time or two. We're going to go together. Dana. We're going to do terrific oh. things. Let me tell you. And as Joe Biden would say, 
Come on, folks. We got to do this. You got to do this. This people. Uh-huh. My father lost his job. No joke. I'm not kidding around here. So I was just doing a little Biden. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're um, really good. We all we're all good, and we just thank you for the and wonderful, you wonderful sun that you, you gave. Too. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I worked on yeah. my lighting for six hours. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, yeah, such a pleasure to to meet you both on, oh, on yeah. this interview and share your thoughts with with the great Chris Farley. And uh, oh, you're thank just you. lovely people, and you're Midwest. I don't know. I just yeah. I kind thank of fall you. in love with you during this. Oh, scene. <laughs> both of you. But yeah. anyway. Um, God bless. And, well, I um, love this show. Is this, yes. Yeah. This is, yeah, this will be on. Fly yes, on the wall. Is, and yeah. David and I are doing this together. And we, we love we love interviewing our friends. And well, yeah. it's really working. That's great. I love it's it. going to get up so to Madison Thanks, soon. Tom. Please we're, do. Yeah. You're welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. The door is always open for you. I'm All gonna right. come by and visit. All right. Bye, you guys. Thank <laughs> you. Bye, you guys. Enjoy bye. it. Good to love see you. Love you. Bye. She is funny, uh, Dana. She's so hilarious. Next up is Rob Lowe, who was in the movie, the great movie, Tommy Boy, with David and Chris. And he has some very funny and interesting stories. Rob Lowe is like water. You know, the thing about water, <laughs> don't ever underestimate the value of water. Uh, don't oh, ever, my God. That, way, that's, a, that's the quickest Lorne we've ever had. That's an actual quote. I, I did not make that up. Not do, not, <laughs> do not ever underestimate the value of me telling you the value of water. <laughs> that was the extension. That was your four. It was a six degree. Rob, have you ever thought, what did he say, Dana? When he, when he left, he goes, you know, Steve said, when you retire, where are you going? And I said, I'm going up, you know, whatever. He had some place. And he goes, will there be funny people there? And he goes, I never thought of that. I'm around funny people every day of my life, which is true. Yeah. And he goes, what if, yeah. what if I wasn't at some point? And I go, God, that hit me too. I go, fuck, that's true. Everyone I know is good. Look, we're talking to Rob Lowe, funny. Just talked to Sandler, funny. Everyone we turn, everyone's funny. And then you go, oh, th- that happened. That happened when we were casting Wayne's World 1. Do you remember that? Uh, uh, inflation adjusted $400 million global uh, movie. But anyway, um, <laughs> but I remember inflation adjusted is big, Rob. Don't tell me you don't go back and go, that was a fucking hit. But I remember yeah. we're talking yeah. about that character that Rob did so brilliantly in the show. And Lauren said, uh, Rob Lowe's available, you know, and Mike and I looked at each other and said, hell yeah. So anyway, yeah. the rest is history. The great Rob the rest Lowe, is, history. Uh, is joining us as we celebrate our friend Chris Farley. And uh, here we are. And uh, how are you, Rob? How's your day? I know you're you're working right now, right? I am. I'm. I'm on. Uh, I'm shooting season four of Firetown Lone Star. Okay. Damn! It's already yeah. season four? four. Season four, and we come. We're on in uh, uh, ja- end of January. We begin on the air, and um, I'm on the set. I'm in my trailer. Um, I told everybody on the set, walk away, because I'm doing something important. You are. I am you going are. to talk to to my two buddies about uh, my third buddy. That's what we're doing. That's what we're here for. Well, Rob, you can open with a story about him or we can just talk about it, whatever you want to do. We can talk about your interaction. Where did you first meet him and what were your thoughts? <laughs> I, I remember there's certain people you vividly remember the first time you you meet them. No, no disrespect to either of you and I love you and your legendary figures. I don't remember the first time I met you. I do remember the first time I met Farley. It was at, Lauren's wedding to Alice. Whoa! whoa. And mm. I was headed out to the porta potty, and there was this large person <laughs> sweating buckets, <laughs> stuffed into a madras. Stuffed. We know what madras yeah, is, right? Yeah. Madras is a uh-huh. particular pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, Colorful. Uh, sport coat, mm-hmm. and pacing up and down and i just like wow they i better see if lauren has security because this is <laughs> this person can't be invited i've come to find out that that was chris farley so we had no interaction but he made such a visual impact uh... on me and then um the next time i met him um he was doing a bit in was it wayne's world one or two dana two, um, I, think. I god wasn't he in both of them i think he was in both he was like back yes it was first he was 
backstage at Alice Cooper. That's yes, what it was. Backstage. Yeah. Seen, and I was like, hey, you're the porta potty guy from Lauren's wedding. Great. You're <laughs> you're doing a little thing in the movie. Good for you. <laughs> and um then um of course um Farley became a very big star. And Lauren and I were playing tennis with the late great Bernie Brillstein. And mm-hmm. Lauren said, um, uh, there's a new idea for a movie. Uh, it's you and Farley as, as brothers. Oh, right, right. <laughs> and I went, that's super funny. And then I didn't hear anything about it for months and months and months. And then Lauren's like, so the movie is coming together and uh, we want to talk to you about it. And, and now it was, uh, they realized that Spade is way more funny than me. So Spade was uh, the, the, the second banana, uh, but I still was the brother and Tommy boy, as you know, Mm -hmm. and then I, you know, then we had great, great stories. I have great stories of shooting with you, Spade and and with, with Farley. Do you remember that? Were you there the day we went to the steakhouse together? Do you remember that dinner at all? Barbarians. Yes. Barbarians. Just in Toronto. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Toronto. So, you know, Farley loved to eat, loved his steak. And (laughs) so I remember he ordered two, two, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> full porterhouse steak. So a porterhouse is a New York steak and a filet on the bone. He ordered two of them. Okay. And then this was like an old school steakhouse, like really super old school with the, the, the vinyl leather bo- yeah. red booths. And, mm-hmm. and they, they serve you um, butter that's in these like squares with that you have to peel the off paper the top. on top. Yeah. yeah. The paper yeah. On top squares, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he put, square of butter on top of every bite <laughs> <laughs> and the bites were generous how many generous. pounds of meat are we talking about <laughs> approximately between the two porterhouses so you took like are they 16 ounce cuts? oh eight i'm sure they're 18 ounces yeah i'm so sure maybe, yeah and so a square on every not every steak every ev- bite every bite and i was so horrified and I looked, I remember looking over at Spade and Spade just gave me that look like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I said, Chris, what is happening? And I'll never forget it. He held up his fork, steak on the fork, butter square on top of the steak. And he goes, <laughs> he goes it needs a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and he stuffs it down his gullet and yeah. did it kind of yeah. look like a little hat on this on yeah. the, you know he was right right it was, it was a, butter, hat. It was a, a bu- little butter hat yeah it was a butter hat that's very a- chris yeah <laughs> rob was there for the great tuna sandwich debacle actually yeah. you were the reason that's right you were the reason T- okay What's the tuna sandwich? I'll play along. Tuna sandwich debacle. Oh, Danny, you're not going to pull that out of me. I'm so in, what happened I'm was- I'm intrigued by the title. <laughs> I'm begging okay. you, Spade. Well, right. I think we've talked about it with Rob before, but you know, he, he, we were always on edge. We were flying back and forth from SNL and every two days, you know, doing read through on SNL. Then we fly after read through and then we'd shoot for Rob. Uh, unfortunately was sort of had to deal with this schedule with us because we were going back and forth. So he'd maybe do a scene with Bo Derek and then we'd come in and do a scene with him. And, and then uh, we were getting short on patience with each other, just with everything, you know, just stressful. And, um, and then he felt sick. The short version is he felt sick and he goes, I, I don't feel good. And we got to shoot in the morning. I'm just going to go right to sleep. And so I got in and Rob was there and, I think we talked and said, let's grab a beer or something. We went just to the Four Seasons, just to the bar. One drink and went in like we got to shoot at 5 a.m. or whatever. So it was it was absolutely nothing. And the next day, he's glaring at me in the in the mirror in makeup. You know, you can bank off the mirror and see the other guy. And I'm like, hey, everybody. And he's just staring at me and he's biting his lip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, he does that, Dana. Uh-huh. Like, you know, you're in trouble. And he goes, how's Rob Lowe? How's Rob Lowe? I go, oh, what's going on? And he goes, how's, how's Rob Lowe? I go, where's Rob Lowe? I don't know. I don't, is he in today? And, he, and then everyone sort of like backs off because you know, it's like going to be a fight. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And he goes, you, we find out as he was mad that Rob Lowe and I went on a date basically without him and uh, we didn't call him. And I said, but you said you were sick. You said, you don't call me because I'm going to bed. I, and he goes, you fucking call me when you have a beer with Rob Lowe. You run it by me. And I go, what? <laughs> and so then <laughs> you run it by me. <laughs> yeah. Let me say no. I'll say no. 
And I go, okay. And then we're on the set and he keeps staring at me and I'm freezing, waiting to enter with Rob Lowe, who's inside with, I think, Brian Dennehy and Bo Derek. And the scene, and I'm shaking because it's fucking 12 degrees. And I'm on the bottom of these stairs or whatever. And I'm biting this tuna sandwich. And he's staring at me. And he's so mad that I'm not fighting back. He just walks over and steps on my hand and my sandwich and crunches everything. I go, what the fuck? And then I threw my Diet Coke on him. And then he pushed me down the stairs. And then they go, action on the walkie. And we both freeze. And then we both just walk into the scene. And then I was the puss that cracked first because I'm just staring. But there's too much going in my head. Like, what's going on? And then so I just go, uh, and then Pete, the director, goes, line for spade? And then I go, like, I know my lines. I just, I, I don't know what's going on. We're in the middle of a fight. So I uh, I left and went to my trailer. And then I think uh, Rob or someone talked to Chris. And then he went to his trailer. It just a big mess on the set. I go, this set's going to be closed down. It was closed down for about 20 minutes. And then they were like, we got to call from Lauren. Get the fuck back to the set and figure it out. We're like, ooh. I remember it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I can see it. I can see him with those. He always wore those awful red wing <laughs> boots. Remember? Always those <laughs> yeah. God awful boots and those tuna crunchers. I remember them. Yeah, he crunched your tuna. I mean, <laughs> and been, my but, fingers. So, what was it like from your point of view, Rob, well, hearing about this? Like the the stars are fighting. <laughs> I think David's leaving out a very salient point. <laughs> Oh, and this is and go. this is what sent Chris over the edge. I think Chris probably would have been okay with us, you know, just down in the bar catching up. But my recollection of it is we went to the hot tub. We went oh, to the jacuzzi. Oh, mistake. mistake. We went to the jacuzzi. And the notion of you and I in a jacuzzi <laughs> without him was too much for him to bear. Without too much Shamu. for him to bear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fun, right. the funny picture, the FOMO was... He was foaming with FOMO. He couldn't fucking deal. And uh, I said, it wasn't even fun. I was trying to really, it was literally like an affair. And we got caught and I was trying to back my way out of it. And he's like, you're lying. And then later when he would talk about (laughs) that, he goes, did you touch him? Did you kiss him? (laughs) Well, you wish Rob Lowe was on our flight. So that was for about a year of uh, him mad. (laughs) He was proprietary about Rob. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and and you know, but I think he he loved Rob being in the movie, and he did love uh, and he loved Bo, of course. And uh, the movie really just we got lucky. We got Farley twenty four hours a day, which was a gift. It was a gift. You know what's insane is, as you know, we all do lots of things, and you never know what's going to stick. But Tommy Boy, like when we when when we were doing Wayne's World, I. I we kind of knew that was a thing. And I mean, we didn't know it was going to be a, a big hit, but we, it was like, whatever. But Tommy Boy was always this kind of, it wasn't a very Saturday Night Live-esque sh- movie, really, because it had way more heart than that. And But Tommy Boy has become, as you know, this this just unbelievable part of people's lives. I was, I, I was getting to know Jonah Hill recently. And Jonah, in all seriousness, not a bit will tell you that it's his favorite movie of all time, period. Period. Huh. Yeah. Is, wow. He hears things about Tommy Boy. Pete Siegel says every, he's a director, he goes, every job I've ever gotten is just, all they have to see on the resume is Tommy Boy, and that's all. He goes, you got it. You can do it. If you can do that, you can do our wow. comedy. What do you think? I mean, it makes me want to watch it again. I remember it being just really a special movie, but Matt, really, I think I need to see it tonight. Something happened in that movie, the chemistry between the cast and, you know, it really was, it set Chris up, right? Chris's, uh, all his strengths were on display. Yes. It was like a coming out of introducing everyone that doesn't watch SNL to Chris and um, backed up by Rob and me and Bo and Brian and everybody just sort of orbiting around him and just letting him do but it was smart they got hard in there and they got the bagpipes and there's just some things in there you don't see coming and and then it all works out so i don't know what it was but it got we got really uh lucky what do you think it is rob what do you think the magic is i i i think it's what uh when because i asked jonah that and listen jonah's one of the smartest funniest dudes around he's a great actor i mean great actor unbelievable unbelievable. director now yeah yeah brilliant and and so I asked him that. It's his favorite movie of all time. So like, what is it? And he goes, uh, he says, 
for me, it's like that scene where Chris is alone, sort of praying in mm-hmm. the sailboat. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I remember, because I remember it making me cry in the theater and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and listen, I love, I love our Wayne's world and I love our Austin Powers movies, but they are making you cry. Yeah. And, and I think that was the special sauce. Yeah. yeah. And Chris had that gear, you know, that empathy, likability, whatever you want to call it, you know, mm-hmm. that you would take that ride with him effortlessly. But I remember that scene myself as being kind of like, whoa, this is, this is unique for a comedy with, with so much great slapstick or physical comedy in it. Man with a little yeah. coat. I mean, that's, did, oh, yeah. was that it? Did he rehearse it or did he surprise you with that? Uh, you know, Pete, uh, Pete has a lot of stories and I think we see it all from our own recollection and some are different because they just are. I don't know what we never really know what's the real, but I remember certain things and I remember, but I remember doing that at work. And, um, and then in the movie, sometimes when there was flat spots, cause it was a movie about brake pads that, uh, <laughs> there, there, there was room for like, Hey, maybe we could spice up this brake pad speech and say, <laughs> <laughs> housekeeping or we could say you know something else that and pete was very good about saying try it like i don't know or even sometimes people would say even especially i think with housekeeping he's like i don't really get it but I'd try it if you guys think and if it doesn't work we take it out and that was a big agreement like let's just try stuff and doesn't work take it out and that's how a lot of movies have done it since and maybe before that but it's a great way to do it because if you have an extra couple minutes Throw every fucking thing against the wall while you're all lined up. You're all in makeup. You're all there. You'll never be there again. Try anything you can. And he did. We got so much out of Chris of uh, just coming. Remember he came to the door, Rob. I don't know if you were there that day. So I go housekeeping. He comes up. And the big decision was he's in tidy whities with like garanimals on him or something. And the next one, he's just in a towel. And the next one, he drops towel. He's totally naked. Right. So... so we had to pick which is the funniest one. So we just do the same scene over and over. And then you go, it's so sad because they're all funny. Two are going to get scrapped. No one will ever see them. I saw dailies years later, I think Pete had, and it was him swinging his dick around because when they go, they don't yell cut. He goes, oh, Richard, oh, hold me or whatever. Don't run from your feelings. And then I slam the door. And and he turns the camera and he swings his dick around. And he goes, "Hi, Sherry Lansing, <laughs> <laughs> president of Paramount, the president." Yeah. Of, oh, yeah, and, and, the president. <laughs> I'm like, Chrissy, what if she's watch? She has to watch dailies, or she watches some, or someone's. Oh, it's so funny. Well, Robbie, thank you for talking to us. We all love Chris, and uh, I know you did. And oh, yeah, um, you're a big, big part of that uh, memory, especially with. Tommy boy. I mean, that's the one thing. Believe me, I hear about it every day too. People come up to me all the time and say, uh, did you ever eat paint chips as a kid? Uh huh. That's a big one. Big one. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of them. This, these shoes are worth more than your life. There's a lot of, a lot of good quotes. By the way, what about, I mean, I mean, we're talking about Chris, but Rob's unsung laughs because Chris, you can't even get attention from him, but your shirt getting sucked off. I, when I saw the dailies, I go, you're out of your fucking mind. Is that how, how did you do that? I couldn't believe it. that's not a trick. Didn't you just do it? That That's one of my proudest. <laughs> comic, Unreal. It's one of my proudest comic moments. It's, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's like this cool guy gets so humiliated and then Perfect. tries to shrug it off. It, it was so it, it was a really elaborate special effect. And they, th- that shirt really does get ripped off of me. It's not CGI. It's nothing. No. And you're ta- you're with Julie Warner, right? That's right. I'm with Julie Warner trying to hit on her. And I'm just this scuzzy, sleazy dirt bag. And, and I'm like, well, hey, I guess I'll catch you later, baby. <laughs> and my shirt gets sucked up one of those pneumatic, you know, those old school pneumatic male tubes. Where they go, shoom, goes up. Yeah, yeah they Does take it come off up. the top of you? I don't really know. It literally just it... goes, oh. I, have a, I have a button down shirt in it. Yeah. It's the button and then goes, it's, it's a double whammy. That's what's yeah. funny brrr, about it. It's, brrr, goes, yeah. it's off me and then brrr, it's up the fucking... Tube. It's one of my favorite <laughs> physical things I ever got to do. Jonah Hill has good taste. Like, that is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. All right, love you, boys. Talk to you soon. Eric Newman was an assistant to Chris and I on the movie Tommy Boy. He is now a big producer on shows like Narcos. 
I don't know. When did we did we met in ninety three, right? Or die already? We no, or did, we met in ninety one. Ninety one. So what years were you on SNL? Well, I was I was a I had been a PA on Wayne's World. Yeah. Oh. And so how, I how I, okay, you started. but I wasn't. You know, I was I was you know there was a privileged group of PAs um, that were a, assigned to you. I kind of had Mike. Um, and so yeah. I, I was, you know, getting him Shaw. and I would Shaw. see, I would see, uh, I remember actually, because it was so fun to think back at the, on that time with this assignment, you know, with Chris in mind, but I, I thought about Wayne's world. And I was thinking about, you know, seeing you, it was always like, uh, it was like you were putting on a show for the people around you. I was not one of them. I was, would walk past and watch you, um, making everyone laugh when I was going to get a sandwich for my Damn. Or something. Yeah. I was, remember uh, that. I, yeah. I remember that. I would make everyone laugh and I'd see you walk by and I, yeah. I'd go, what's, up with, what's up with Newman? <laughs> um, I would, but anyway, well, party on. And party on. Thanks, indeed, for, yeah, thanks, I, for, I, thanks for joining oh, us. Thanks for having me. I, I came to the show in the 93, 94 season. Mm-hmm. And I think you had just left or were leaving? Yeah, yeah. like you, in the spring or something, yeah. right before the McCartney episode where Chris did his. Yes. So when you write this, uh, you know. That <laughs> <piece. Yeah. laughs> Wait, yeah. Dana, you left during the season? Yeah, we didn't have it. No one's playing instruments singing. I'm not dancing with Lauren. You just kind of go out the back door. They go, good, yeah. r- good riddance. <laughs> Later. Look, my Dude. choices around that time is for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just say that I, I was a pretty naive young man. But um, so you got there and you're a, you're you're working on the show. Yeah, Chris, I was Lauren's. Yeah. I think Lauren's idea was because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make movies and, and uh, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know then that TV would become what it became. I was like, well, I want to go, you know, uh, movies are where it's at. And, and I, yeah. uh, and I went, I came to the show. I think his idea was I would get to know the cast um, and then I would, you know, help him make his movies. And, you know, Lauren, as he does now, you know, then he had tremendous power. He was able to, he was the only producer for whom you could make a movie during the, the SNL season. And he would just kind of make sure. it work. And, you know, I came out there uh, and, and we were developing Tommy boy at the time. And, and the plan was uh, during the season, we'd make that movie. And, and he was able to arrange um, a way where, and it was a, it was brutal. And David, you'll remember the, the, our, our plane, our little jet we had, that was the shittiest private yeah. plane that, uh, Oh, I hate was, bad private jets. No, no. They're, yeah, I they're, know they're terrifying. These were, it was, oh. it was, it was barely, an MRI with wings. Yes. Basically. What and, was it? Uh, was it a prop plane? No, or was it an actual little was jet? Was it what a Lear, Lear 35 or something? Lear 55? Yeah. yeah or yeah. like a Cessna, like CJ smaller or something. Yeah. But I mean, this CJ3. is, you know, the nineties. And so, I mean, this thing was like barely, uh, flight rated. Um, Could, and yeah, we, we would get on it. You know, this, our schedule was basically, Hey Newman, yeah. why don't we get on? Cause it's so small. It's just me, probably me, you and Chris. Yep. And uh, he, he sort of had to keep an eye on us. And then, um, I'd get on the pilot, would shake my hand. Newman gets on and Chris gets on and they go, uh Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, they would have, they would maybe have to have weight. to sit in the back or something yeah. like that. They're, they're thinking it's all about, about balance. Yeah. They want to make sure the weight's all perfect. Go ahead. Well, that was really my job. Lauren said to me, he's like, you know, look after uh, David and Chris, but really Chris, you know, it was like, it wasn't really David. <laughs> Every, everyone like, has a Lauren. Everyone yours does. Is actually, I know. Yours actually, that, that was, was really, good. that was really good because it was understated, but, but very real. It's funny. You know, yeah. Rob Lowe has a really good Lauren. By the way, you have a phenomenal yeah. Lauren, I know, um, yeah. but his, right. his Lauren's really good and it's kind of what he chooses to say with it that's so good because there are certain yes. things yeah. that just sound like they'd be you know things Lauren would say but that was his, like, you know yeah. really you know it's really about Chris you know he's you know and, and at the time and I you know not a lot of people remember that this sort of period of Chris from like I guess it was must have been 93 to 96 when we made these movies uh David and mm-hmm. Chris and me and, and the others Chris was totally sober in this period. 
uh, you know, if he... That's he, what I, I yeah, thought. Because he, so, he seems so great in Tommy Boy. I couldn't imagine he was using... No, yeah, he wasn't bloated in the face no. or like bleary and just on point. We were and we were together all the time. Was, my job was to look after him. David was uh, uh, I don't know if this has changed. I doubt it has. David is the only actor I've ever worked with uh, e even since who was looking to get out of scenes. Anytime David <laughs> could say, hey, what if, what if my guys, what if my guys not in this scene? How about what if I'm, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and I remember, you know, we, we, would, we would take this plane, you know, and the schedule basically was we would fly to Toronto on, you know, from Teterboro Airport in, in New Jersey. We'd fly to, to um, Toronto and we would shoot Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, we would fly back for the read through. We would do the read through. Jeez. Then we get back on the plane, fly up flashbacks shoot thursday friday and i think friday night we would come back and join rehearsals or you know chris and david yeah. would um i would just watch and uh and then do the show and then oftentimes we would i don't know why we would rather than go back to our, our apartments and go to sleep on sunday we would fly back saturday night after the show and, and we Our, did that for, wow you know, yeah it was a, we did it for you know at least you know that Six you know, months. sometimes Newman, I remember one time we did that. We had to fly back after the show. I think we just did. But Sunday morning, we had a scene in Tommy Boy where Rob Lowe, we're inside an auto plant. It's Zelensky. Yep. And Rob Lowe gets hit in the balls. And yep. we only had that, I think, for <laughs> yeah, Sunday. Yeah, for Sunday. So we, yeah. I think we That's shot right. 24 hours. That was one night we broke some rules because we just kept shooting. And I'm like, I think we're, are we going to keep going? And they went, like Sunday from 7 a.m., then it went to 7 p.m., then it went, and I was like, oh boy. Oh, that, was God, I know. That, that was the Ackroyd thing. That was the, yeah, that, yeah, that was it, because we only, yeah, it was a functioning plant that yeah. we could only shoot on Sunday. Yeah, it was, it was brutal and uh, it was fun. And, and at that, I was probably 22 years old, so I could. Uh, do youth it. really helps in those situations. <laughs> yeah, it was. Because yeah, I'm getting really, tired just thinking about it. Was it, but that's it was brutal. Crazy. Um, and I thought, uh, you know, we had this, this plane and, and it was, you know, in those days, you could smoke on the plane. So Chris smoked anywhere. Uh, and we would, you know, play checkers. I don't know why. I didn't, and checkers to me isn't even really a game. It's more, it's kind of like playing like coin, co uh, coin toss. It's like, you it's know. Like a, it's like a time killer for checkers. I guess there's not a 12 move ahead thing no, with checkers. No, really. You're just... No. And uh, you know, there's no Bobby Fisher of, of checkers. Yeah, and, right. But for some reason... We would play. I never played with David because he was, you know, he, he knew it was a waste of time. But Chris, well, he was to play. a chess champion. Yeah, David. It, and it was the old saying: I was playing chess, and they were over exactly. there playing checkers. Literally, literally. There we go. and <laughs> and I, David was plotting to get out of scenes while yeah. you guys are playing chess. I was, I was <laughs> highlighting the script, going, "They don't need me in this. I, I don't need to have that entrance." Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I beat I beat Chris like ten times in a row. I mean, just okay. literally is like, yeah, oh man. <laughs> and you know, he started getting madder and madder, and then at one point. <laughs> He screamed at me. He's like, "You never move your back row." And he tipped the checker uh, oh the table my over. God, yeah, I he remember was, that. He would get uh, and his, you know, he had he was very aware of his sort of, you know, how funny his temper was. So it would always kind of become a joke. But yeah, David, do you remember when uh, when David again trying to get out of work or at least knowing when work was coming? David would, would ask me for a day out of days. Uh, schedule. Oh yeah, I love that. And uh, day day out of day. Yeah. So okay. you know, day out of days is a you know as you know for those who don't know is it's a it's a single piece of paper. It has sort of a almost a graph on it that yeah. will tell you like when you're working. You can look at it. You right. can find the actor. Monday through Friday. Yeah. You go. Here you are. Spade works. Farley works. Yeah. It's first, not. Yeah. And they're not that easy to read unless you you know know how to read them. But so David and I are. I've got one, and David's got one. And uh, and Chris sees that like here's this thing that he doesn't have, and he he te exactly. he tears mine out of my hand, and he says he says from now on anything David gets I get, <laughs> and he looks at it, he looks he at it one way, turns it sideways, can't like can't figure it out, and then he's and upside down, and then he pretends yeah. to fall asleep. You know, like, <laughs> he he used to. Um, I remember one one night. We were flying on the plane. It was for some reason, David, you weren't there. You successfully gotten out of whatever it was that we wanted you to yes. do. And uh, yes. we're on the plane and, you know, it's 
three in the morning and it's dark and the, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep or at least, you know, half asleep, my eyes closed and the light turns on Bong. and I can, I can hear Chris la- trying not to laugh. So I'm like, Oh, oh like, I don't know what this is going to be. And I turn over and Chris is laying stretched out on the chair next to me, totally nude. <laughs> And he had taken off all his clothes and he was, and he was waiting for me to notice him. But like, you know, it was the most, you know, uh, botched joke ever, but it was, it was really, really <laughs> One funny. One checker over yeah. his dick. <laughs> he, um, he had done this it needs a hat. thing to me bef- before we, <laughs> before we started, uh, Tommy boy, there was, you know, you know, you guys have talked a lot about, about SNL on the show, obviously. And, and, you know, so, so people know that there's a dress rehearsal and then there's a sort of an hour in between, you know, and then there's a, then the, the live show and they're virtually the same show, except things get cut um, based on time or performance. And Chris had gotten uh, a sketch cut that he was excited about. And, and I remember I saw him outside of Lauren's office um, on, on the, on the ninth floor, you know, the one, the, the office that's just above eight, you know, the, I guess it's the ninth floor. And he was, Chris was upset and he, and I was in the hallway with him alone. And he said, you know what? Fuck this. Like I'm done. Fuck this. And you know, the show was starting and, and he walked out of down the hallway to the elevator, pressed the down button and got into the elevator. And, and I got in with him because I was like, you know, I, it was, I, it was a little bit like my favorite year, you know, like I, I had to follow, you know, uh, Peter uh, O'Toole Chris around yeah. and I couldn't, yeah. yes, Peter, exactly. And I, I couldn't, you know, I didn't have a cell phone, um, but we get into the elevator and, you know, at, at 30 Rock, they have all the monitors and the show, I can see that the show has started and Chris and I are now going down the, ele- you know, we're in the elevator, we've, we've exited in the lobby and, I said, Chris, what you know? Where, what, are, what are you doing? Like, we're you know, you have, you have like maybe you know, there's the monologue, and then like you're in the first sketch, and he's like, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to Eighth Avenue and score. Like, I'm like, fuck this, we're gonna go to the Barney Stone. I'm like, no, 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 we're not. I can't. Like, this is you know, this is this will be bad for you. It'll be really bad for me. <laughs> Chris and, will be fine. You'll get fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, and I don't know how. Like, yeah, we pass the the security guards downstairs. They're like, hey, why is Chris Farley in some type of costume walking out? <laughs> Dressed as a pilgrim. And then the, yeah, exactly. I think he was like a bumblebee or something. And then uh, and everyone's like, is this like part of the show? I'm like, no. I'm like, it's not part of the show. And I and I don't know how to call for help. And we get out onto Fifth Avenue, and um, he uh, and he hails a cab. And I'm like, I'm Chris. Please don't do this. And he's like, no, nah, fuck this. The cab pulls up. He opens the door. And I'm thinking, do I go with yeah. him? Do I run upstairs? I can't, I don't know, I wouldn't even know who to get to. And he opens the door and then he's like, I'm just fucking with you, shuts it. And we get back in the elevator, go upstairs and he goes out right in time to go on uh, the sketch. And I had forgotten it. It was so traumatizing. It's a practical joke. Until, <laughs> yeah, all, the, it was the, the meanest traumatic joke ever, but it was, but I think after that, Cause that was before even Tommy, I think he was like, okay, I, this guy can, I like this guy. Like he's, you know, he went on the whole <laughs> ride with me and you I didn't lose I it. No, yeah. I didn't lose it. So I, you're 22 man. years of age. I and mean, yep. what do you, I mean, yeah. the psychological jujitsu that you're being asked to, to be knowledgeable about. I mean, I guess Lauren intuited that you had kind of a high yeah. social IQ or something. Cause that's, yeah. Dumb. I mean, like, like a lot, I would say like most of the people who have my job, like, by the way, my daughter, Sarah, has my job now at Saturday Night Live of 30 years ago. Oh, really? Um, hi, Sarah. Yeah, yeah it's, hi, Sarah. Um, <laughs> is she out trying to score with one of the performers? Is right she now watching? She watching Colin Jost or something? Who's yeah, she so, yes, basically. Yeah, <laughs> she's. She's, uh, she's. I think she's attached to the writers. Which mm-hmm. is probably safer than being attached to the talent as I you was. You know, Dana. Whenever wow. they said, "Where's Farley?" and they go, "He went down to Ninth Avenue," everyone knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah. There was a there was a person's name. That when they said he's with that person, I go, oh boy, because everyone knew that's he's. That was, he's it was back. the Blarney Stone, I think, or one of those Blarney Stone bars. Go meet, so, yeah, yeah. But I had, I think, you know, I had been a, you know, a, a family friend of Lauren, my dad and Lauren. You know, my dad was the musical guest of the second show. Your dad is uh, Randy, Randy Newman. Newman. 
Yeah, so, fraud. so you're, fraud. you know, you fought, you're from, uh, that's what I didn't, didn't know if you wanted me to say, but okay. you're from a famous family. So at least you have been around it enough to know something. So you're not just totally, no, uh, I wasn't like a 22 year old regular. No, dipshit. not, not regular, but I, I, uh, I actually really appreciate, uh, I guess appreciates throwing bad behavior is sort of entertaining to me. It always has been, you know, when I would, <laughs> I would, I would encounter it. Um, uh, and, and, and so when it happened, it's a good attitude. Yeah. I just never, you know, I never, it, it, you know, I wasn't, I was never shocked by it. I did, uh, I, I did work very hard. Like I, I, and I felt like I had sort of the, the advantage. I remember the first day of Wayne's world, you know, and I was in college as the summer, you know, it was a summer thing. You know, I had to go meet Lauren at the parking gate at Paramount, you know, where he had driven in. He was driving one of those like new 500 Mercedes, the two door, you know, the convertible that no one had yet. You know, it's like beep, I mean, beep yeah. over here. I like, I'm here. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't use a parking car. You know, so I, I go beep. out there and I stand, you know, and the guard, you know, is like, hey, you can't do that. I was like, trust me, like I, I can. It's, you know, I, it's, I have to I have to. And so. You know, I, I, I use the card to let him in and uh, he's like, what's going on? You know, like, give me, you know, like, like basically like brief him, but I brief him while he continues driving at about 12 to 15 miles an hour. So I'm running alongside and talking with Lauren, <laughs> telling Lauren, like, well, today you have this, you know, this. and I think he's like, hmm, I like this, this guy's, you know, he'll, he'll do it. You know, I'll send him in. And I think I was sort of a, you know, uh, uh, you could kind of send me into the machine gun, I guess. And I think maybe he knew that. And so I, hmm. and I, at SNL, you know, it was, it was a great, you know, I know that I was telling my daughter that, that when you're there, even if it's a great year, everyone talks about how shitty the show is. If you're yeah. on the show, everyone was like, oh, yeah. we were, you know, we're not, and, and you don't realize you're part it's of. It's not cool anymore. No, but, yeah. and then you look back to see, you know, it was you guys and it was raw and it was, you know, uh, I think rock had just left, but it was, you know, Sandler who I saw yesterday at a farm shop. Um, and, uh, it was Mike and, and it was Phil's last year on the show. It was just mm. this phenomenal, like golden era yeah. of the show. But when you're in it, it's always kind of, you know, it, I, I, sure. I always saw that when I came back to guest house, I was just in a room hanging out with Farley, David, maybe rock, um, and Sandler, and they were just so fucking funny. I just yeah. thought they were the funniest group of people and so talented and smart. So this whole, that's why they got the name, the bad boys. You know, yeah. Right? It, yeah. It was a, it was, but a, then it was Saturday night dead. Yes. Yeah. There was that, you know, I guess there was a review and there also, there had been a book had come out that it sort of, but you know, I, I went to see Lauren a, a couple of weeks ago because, you know, to visit my daughter and it's, unchanged you know pretty much in oh terms yeah of, really it's, Amber. Yeah, he's yeah. he figured it out you know he's mm -hmm. tension and never never same. did a new theme never did a new format mm -hmm. he was very smart about his yeah. brand it's what they newman do you do you remember dana when uh uh the new york maybe you just left the new york magazine yeah, I remember was that article. Was embedded yeah. with us. Yeah. And then yeah. the guy fu rat fucked us and wrote a bad article and everyone was on nah yeah. yeah, up on seventeen, going. That's when Farley and Sandler were like, "Let's go beat the fuck out of this guy." And there was definitely a <laughs> long conversation about what, how to do that, because what Farley are you was. Doing? Yeah, Farley <laughs> so was leading the charge. Sandler though. yelling. He yeah, was, I think uh, it wasn't risk getting fired, but everyone was so felt so betrayed. I well, remember that. It was that. a nasty I, article. Nasty. That was I, that was that year because I remember that guy was around. Yeah, um, I don't remember. And, and I'd never seen anybody let in like a Monday meeting or really on the inside, everyone's kissing his ass. And then he's like, these fucking dipshits. And we're like, oh boy, uh-oh, this, we just got welcome to showbiz. Do you remember David when, do you remember when we saw Bon Jovi at the airport? Do you remember that? Oh, that it's story? the private airport? It's, the, it's great. It, so, so we're, so we have this, <laughs> like I said, we had this shitty little plane. <laughs> Jalopy. And you know, that barely hold, you know, duct Volkswagen tape. Volkswagen with like, wings. You know, literally the, the pilot's like, hey guys, can one of you hold on to that like, yeah. panel yeah. while we land? So, so we have and, to duct tape the wings one yeah. more round. Just yeah. to... And every once in a while we would get a different plane, but it was never a better plane. But one day we're at, <laughs> we're on the way back to SNL from, from the way back to, to New York. And we're in that little private air terminal and this beautiful plane is wheeled out mm -hmm. like this. It's like a G4, a brand new yeah. at the time. Golf stream. And, and, uh, yeah. and we're like, wow, like, like clearly like, you know, whoa, what are we, you know, like, 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 we our plane was like that plane had a baby. Yes. Yeah. And so 
we think for a minute, maybe that's our plane. And then they're like, no, no, that's not your plane. And out walks John Bon Jovi and the other Bon Jovi, the only other guy whose name I know. Uh, Richie. Richie. Richie Sambora. And, <clears throat> yeah. And they're, yeah. that's their plane. They're rock stars. Yes. And they see Chris and David and, you know, in the way that famous people always kind of know each other, like, oh, hey, man, it's like, you know, What's and, up? and right on cue, our plane comes out and Bon Jovi <laughs> looks at it and goes, is that, that your plane? And they're like, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of you know, like already braced for, you know, the, like, sound effect. And it's like that. And he's like, oh, he's like, wow, you guys should you should come with us. Like, you know, and we're like, and, and at that point, you know, we're kind of insulted and 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 you know chris is like no nah, no nah, no nah, we got you know, we're, we're, we're good dude and bon jovi goes well good luck and <laughs> gets on his plane <laughs> and flies away and <laughs> a number of years later i don't think david i ever told you this a number of years later i had a meeting with bon jovi you know his manager i think it was michael I think it was michael rodenberg or somebody said hey will you meet john he's you know he's he's acting and 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 he's not a bad actor at all and i had this meeting with him and I reminded him like, you know, yeah, we, I said, I met, I met you at the airport with, you know, uh, Farley and Spade. He's like, and he immediately was like, you know what? He goes, I think about that sometimes because I think I came off sounding like a dick and I seriously didn't mean to the moment I got wow. on the plane. I was like, why did I say that? And I was like, wow, like, wow. Turns out great guy, you know, like it was, or he uh, even yeah. gave a shit or he even remembered. remembered. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was probably an awkward joke. Cause he probably was kind of uh, comedians who are famous are intimidating as well. Yeah. Cause they sure. have, they have x-ray vision. They're seeing the whole playing field, but uh, God, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, it was cool. It was fun. We went, we used to go to, uh, uh, what was the rest of barbarians? Chris always wanted to go to. <laughs> That and then, by the way, every by the way, barbarians has come up about. The I know, of course, it was like it's hysterical. It was place. What was so great about it? I mean, just dark and it a was bar in proximity and, to a strip club. Yeah, I call oh, it the Brass Rail, which is the across Brass the street. Rail. But I also think that, like, it was it must have been comforting. I think Chris came from that kind of place in terms, of, like, where the steakhouse was the mm -hmm. you know when, when yeah, the, the, you know, the yuck bag. Yeah, when the family would go out to dinner, <laughs> you know, on a special occasion, they would go to this you know red yeah, leather booth, up -chuck. you know, steak place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was he would, and then we would always end up at the brass rail. When we go to the brass rail, Dana, so we get per diem, right? So if people don't know, you get like money to spend for food on a movie. Mm -hmm. So let's say we get seven hundred bucks for the week, and then. We're stuck on the movie so much. It's fun because it's free actual cash mm -hmm. that no one can get their greedy mitts on. We just get to keep it. But you don't spend it that much because you're you're always on the set. Yeah. So we go to the brass rail and, and he goes, David, come with me. And I go, I don't want to go there again, dude. He goes, just two seconds. We walk in. He'd immediately take a VIP dance. So I just sit there for 45 yeah. minutes. And then he comes back and he goes, all right, I'm tapped out. Let's go. <laughs> and then we'd go and I go, you spent all your pretty. And he goes, David. If you don't spend it, you have to give it back. I go, I don't that's think that's how it true. works. Dude. I have to give it back. <laughs> he goes, give me yours. I'll spend it for you. I go, no, no. He had a, such a funny relationship with you, David. <laughs> He'd say these little innocent things to you all the time. I know, so they, they, you guys fought. I don't know. I mean, you remember when you guys had, yeah, they were fighting oh, on during yeah. uh, Tommy during Boy. During Tommy Boy. And what was the fight basically about? Uh, David, I, I mean, there was definitely a girl somewhere in there. Right? I can't remember exactly mm. what. What uh, that was more black sheep. But yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah, was right. yeah, that was yeah. When did he step on your sandwich? Uh, that was Tommy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, there was a problem during. Yeah, on Tommy Boy for that. Um, but he. Oh yeah, he stepped on my sandwich. The great tuna salad. Yeah, uh, he sandwich smashes it. Mark Gurley called me and said, "Did but, Chris step on David's sandwich?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> and his fucking hand. Yeah. And uh, that was really the problem. And then he threw me down the stairs. But yeah, I'm that was that too. But I you're will. light and you're scrappy. You but rolled Dane, it. I didn't say this part. So Fred Wolf is one mm -hmm. of the writers. He yeah. he uh he was on set writing a lot yeah. of jokes and he comes in my my thing and Farley's so <laughs> mad and he doesn't know what to do because Fred's like, You can't beat up Spade. He's in the movie and you can beat him up, but just don't because he knows you can, we all know you can, and you're that anger and and, and he goes, I know, I know. And he, and he walks away, but he's so mad. Skippy walks by and out the window, he full form shoulder tackles Skippy for absolutely no reason, <laughs> as hard as he can to the ground. Cause Skippy was 350. Yeah. And he had to find someone his size. Yeah. That's all he heard in his head. So he just decks him 
and then gets up and walks away and lights a cigarette. And Skippy's on the ground going, oh, <laughs> because we, he just had to get it out. He and was, then it, it calm down. We go, let's go back to the set. It was really weird to go back to the set after having a fight and going, this is just our life. We he do was, this all what, the time. What, Eric? What do you want I to say? I feel like he was incredibly uh, uh, agile. Like, you know, he was a big guy, but man, mm. like he could really yeah. ice skate. He could do, he was like incredibly athletic. And, and, you know, I, I could see him putting, you know, all of his weight behind a, a shoulder like that and knocking oh, a giant guy like sure. Skippy down. And again, that was while the, the guy is saying, hi, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, doesn't see it coming at all. Maybe Chris Ooh. knew something we didn't know. Yeah. That was, that was on the future. <laughs> like, yeah. On the horizon. We, I think Skippy was getting me back for that. We had a, uh, I remember you and, and Chris and I were sitting, at, uh, in our chairs, I even I think I even got a chair uh, at that point. I think it must have been far enough into the production where I had finagled my own chair. But and we're sitting with Brian Dennehy, who, you know, in between takes. It was at that house, that crazy Tommy house. Ball. And and Dennehy was like reading a book or something, and he looks over at these three idiots sitting next to him, and he's like, "So, uh, what are you guys up to for uh, what's next for you guys?" And we're all like, wow, "We don't know, no idea." He's like, "Oh, I'm doing the big one this fall." And, and we're like the big one. He's like salesman. And so oh. David and, and I are like, Oh, cool. Sal salesman. And Chris goes, what salesman? And he says, death of a salesman. And then Chris goes, what's death of a salesman? <laughs> <laughs> and no, he had no idea, but oh, he God. was, he was a, uh, yeah. <laughs> he did this thing, you know, he was, he did this thing with me. He, it started as like, a, uh, cause I do think he, you know, I, I felt Chris did believe that I was going to do things. And my, you know, I think he, 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 he had sort of said, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to make it, um, which I appreciate it. It was all, all you want to hear when you're a kid. Um, and though I wasn't much younger than he was, uh, but you know, in terms of what he had already accomplished, like I was, you know, I was nowhere. And, and, and he had this thing he would do where he would pretend uh, that I like it already. I had, made it and many <laughs> years later you know it's 10 years on or whatever and his career had gone into the toilet and so he was you know running into me <laughs> trying to get jobs uh, <laughs> trying to get like you know work and talking about like you know yeah you know things haven't been so good for me you know and he and he went really deep with it like you would talk about like you know, a kid that he found out he had that he hadn't <laughs> that yeah. he didn't know. It was I like need the, the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, His go, big scenarios yep, thing, he would he go, Davey, I'm going to act like I'm a waiter. <laughs> yep. And you act like you want this food, but we don't have it. Yeah. And then we would just do that in the office for fucking to kill time. Yeah. But you get the funniest things out of that. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so best. Funny. And he would cry. He would get himself like, <laughs> yeah. it, like at his own like Love it. imagined Love it. predicament of how bad things had gotten for him. And then yeah. I remember he had done, you know, he got paid on Cable Guy. There was like that Cable Guy thing where like mm -hmm. he, he, yeah, I remember he was he supposed was, to be yeah, he got paid to not do it, right? Yeah, to not do it. And wow. then he got offered, uh, this is during Black Sheep. Um, yeah. You know, where he got offered Beverly Hills Ninja. Remember yeah. that? And he was got. We remember. We, fortune six million. Yeah, we just, we just yes. talked to Cravoy. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh good. Yeah. And yeah, I I remember. I mean, you know, and I, I'm a fan of Brad's, but like I remember saying like, "Don't do Beverly Hills Ninja." <laughs> I was like, "Why? Why are you gonna do that?" I guess I was such a Lorne loyalist. I was like anything that was outside of the Lorne. Um, uh, uh, well, well, you know, there was a mess with Black Sheep, and then. He could have done Cable Guy that summer. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then they went, you know, he went to Jim Carrey, but he was going to get a nice chunk, maybe three for Cable Guy, which was huge. And then here comes Curvoy with six. And I was just, we were all going, whoa. Well, that was when it's funny. You just remind me. That's what Gervitz screamed at me <laughs> once. Um, I had dinner with Gervitz yeah. the other night and Gervitz screamed at me. He called me and, and, uh, because I had said, I had sort of offered an opinion as to why that happened. It's like, you know, it's like, Lord, he remember Chris was pissed that cable guy had somehow gotten away from him. And he, I think yeah. he blamed Lorne or he blamed, you know, I think he had to do black sheep. Yes. Mm -hmm. He had to do black sheep. Yeah. And, and I said to him, I said, well, you know, like I basically said something, which I, you know, it was the last time I ever said, you know, now I have so many friends who are representatives and like the worst thing you can do is get in between a client and the rep by sure. saying, Hey, your guy didn't read the 
contract or something. And I just, but I was, you know, young and I said that, and boy, Adam Bennett called me first and, you know, he was the soft touch. Uh And he was like, you, you yeah. made a mistake and, you know, you got like, and then Purvis he was the jab and, and here comes the right hook. Blast, blasted me. Like, really, wow. it was, I still remember it. What the it was, fuck are you, you know, guys doing? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, do me a favor, stay the fuck out of our business. Ba- yeah. Basically. Um, but Yeah, uh, that was a big mess, but it was, I think they, they, Lauren wouldn't push or Paramount wouldn't push Black Sheep an extra summer. But, you know, he has, we have one summer to shoot something, you know. Paramount was rough. And though they, I yeah, mean, they all rough movie on, studios are rough, but like you remember, they were the, rough on Pete Siegel. Too. Oh yeah, but they're also rough. Like I remember there was a Wayne's World two mm-hmm. thing. Remember Dana, where they were going to sue Mike over yeah. some, you know, yeah, like, sort of p- passport to Pimlico. To Pimlico, exactly. The beats wow. were too right. lined up or something, so yeah. we had to get the script together very, very quickly. And we couldn't yeah. punt because we already had a tie in with McDonald's. So yeah, it was the train left the station and That's <laughs> such great movie biz. It, it, oh, was, so it was awesome. fun behind the scenes. It's mm-hmm. unreal. Yeah. Just for our audience. I just want to say, because people are listening to this, Eric Newman went on to become a huge movie producer and television producer, Narcos. I just think that's a, a nice context. And oh, now thank his, you. His da- young yes. daughter, Sarah is at Saturday night live. So I, I, uh, anyway, we, we should have you for an episode. <laughs> I would love, by the way, I would like, I don't know what, what, what more I, I I'll come up with uh, you something. You seem certainly. to be a fountain of stuff around that show. Newman, so. It is so fun talking to you because it throws me exactly right back on the plane and exactly yeah. how him turning that goddamn sheet upside down and going, you give me one of these fucking things while he's smoking, while smoking, it's three feet of airspace. Sweating and smoking. And and, and, he, and and he turns it upside down and looks, he doesn't even understand it. And then he just fakes and falls it asleep. Was, it was nice to think about um, him. You know, I, 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 as we all did, you know, I, I, I loved him. You know, he yeah. was uh, he so sweet. He was amazing. His core, you know, and he laughed yeah. so hard at your jokes and he was so eager. Yeah, he was a sweet guy. And now we uh, we talked with Mike Myers, who uh, knew Chris in Chicago, uh, loved him, and um, he's got some really really interesting and fun stories actually about the genius of Chris Farley. I want to thank Mike Myers uh, for coming on today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Any thoughts about our our oh, great friend Chris Farley, one of the all time funniest humans that walked around on our planet? Oh, he's a uh... Chris Farley was a genius, uh, just one of the most naturally funny people I've ever met. Big heart, kind person, um, you know, just uh, somebody you couldn't stop watching. You know what I mean? You, you know, he had that, uh, he was must-see TV. Oh, my God, how corny. But yes, you know what I mean? And uh, it's kind of true. And because uh, you were in Second City with him, right? Or you were I was, in Chicago I was, when he was, I, was there. I was. I wasn't in Second City with him. I was waiting for my American immigration to kick in. And uh, Del Close and Sharna Halpern were very, very gracious to allow me to work out while I was waiting for my Second City American immigration to kick in because I was born in Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, there I improvised a lot with Farley and, and he, you know, he was obviously super talented. Uh, sometimes it was very dangerous. Literally people's teeth would get knocked out. And uh, because he would get so animated, it actually knocked someone's yeah, teeth out. It, it, yeah, I got hit in the head a couple of times. Um, it was very different than the more kind of genteel comedy that I was uh, used to in Canada and certainly in England where it's um, a little more. Verbal. Clever is a very important thing in British comedy and uh, less important. Clever, like, uh, you know, oh, my God, what a clever use of words. And in America, Mm -hmm. and I'm probably more funny. (laughs) Funny should be clever, fantastic. Uh, You know what I mean? It's like kind of like what's happening right now in the world of Clapter where people will give you a round of applause for having said something politically. Uh, clapter. <laughs> clapter, as opposed to laughter. Yes, fine, yeah. fine choir, preach to choir, yes. and then get clapter. Clapter. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I was raised with laughter, you know what I mean? Because yeah. something about being between America and England, appreciate clever, mm-hmm. Uh, crave mm-hmm. laughter and Farley was pure laughter and uh, 
you know, one of my strongest memories is, which is what I love working with you, Dana, when we made the movies, is that you're funny. And, and David, I've hung out with you. Very, very funny. Off for no other reason than we just enjoy having a sense of humor. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it's and there are comedians I've met who are not those people. And they look at you like, it's, we're not working now, clown, relax. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I would be yeah. doing this if there was no money in it, dude. I just like, I like doing bits. Will Ferrell's like that. Mm-hmm. I, I have a long, I have a 25 year old running bit with Will Ferrell. And I had that with Farley. So every, every on Saturday Night Live, I used to have my dinner. Then I would, on Saturday, on the day of, then I'd have my mm-hmm. shower at exactly 4 17 or something. And Farley would always come to my shower completely naked <laughs> with his big giant body. <laughs> and he'd press me against the wall and go, Oh, Michael, <laughs> I've always loved you. Just one kiss. And I would, I'd beat him. I'd beat him by heart. I said, Go, Farley, get the fuck out of here. Get out, get out, get out. And I just, I couldn't hit him very hard because it was so funny. And every week I forgot. Yeah. You think you would remember that every week. But I was he's coming very, in. very intense at Saturday Night Live. Just go, okay, sure. move that over here. That has to move over here. That's going to get cut. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, and where was the shower, Mike? I'm sorry. The, the where was the shit on the nine? The bathroom, which is another thing that was oh, super cool. On perfect. nine? On the ninth floor. The yeah. The studio's right. on the eighth floor. On the ninth floor, you have these little tiny, I don't know if it's still like that, but tiny cubby hole dressing rooms. Yeah. And then on right at the end of the hall are communal men, women, bathroom yes. that had a communal yeah. shower. So I would, I'd found out the time when nobody was, was there. And it's like a hostel. It was, it was very much like a youth hostel. And I'd dip <laughs> in, I had everything laid out so that my shower was literally like 11 seconds long. <laughs> and every time Farley came in and pressed me. Mike, don't run from your yes, feet. Oh my with total commitment. So he was stalking you. He was checking the time as well. Yes. Knowing. And he was ready for you. That's hysterical. And I never remember because, you know, the shows, I think you had said at Dana Brass, which is being shot out of a can and flying to Tokyo once a week. You're so tired. And yeah. you go, I'm only going to ever do this show once in my life. I might as well give it my all. What else would I do? I think it was... A- I I regret not taking a shower it, it, there. I should have done. No, something. I think I don't know if I took a shower the whole time I was on it. I, we I know. Was so tired. I needed something to wake up, you know. And I yeah. I I'd come in and do rewrites. Uh, Mike, I have a question about that. More of a statement. I thought, or as an old it, sketch a, you wrote, it's a question with a statement wrapped in an indictment. But go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yes. You did one. You sure that was. One of my favorites, I don't know if it gets enough fanfare, it might, Japanese game show. Right. And um, you, it was so funny already. Very you wrote funny. it. I think no, you wrote I didn't it. Write uh, it. You're in it. Was, um, oh, you didn't. Seemed like no, you. No. Was it Handy, maybe? No. Oh, God. I can't think of his name right now. Super funny writer. He, he was a guest writer that week and he wrote it and, and made us all learn Japanese. Oh, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then Farley is the added ingredient yes. that. Uh, was so so great. He's uh, for people that don't see it. It's a purely Japanese game show. He comes in off the street. He thinks he's you in think a different. He's taking a studio know, tour different... of, of uh, Tokyo TV. Yeah, but in fact, he ends up as a contestant. <laughs> and part of the show is to be electrocuted and humiliated. And uh, of course, <laughs> you know. And he's playing Wisconsin, like the perfect like you talk in Japanese to him, and then someone cut someone's finger off when they get the question yeah. wrong. He's like, Oh wait, I, I, again, I am not, I don't speak Japanese. I'm not from here. With my wife. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, I, th- I feel like I'm lost. I shouldn't be answering. And, be, <laughs> and I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Lord, yeah. Yeah. What it's are so, you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've talked about how did. Chris's explosive rhythm was yeah. always so potent when he was in distress or being injured or anything where he was panicked. Mm-hmm. He had that. And it was very musical. I mean, since you saw him a little more up close, maybe in Chicago than we did, but there, there was a, a high intellect in a sense, comedic IQ that Chris had mm-hmm. that he, he knew, he knew what he was doing. He knew how funny those rhythms were. It reminded me of Kennison in a way when he yes. would scream. 
Kennison had the staccato, but yeah. Chris had his own sort of, whoa, you guys sort of were doing it a second ago, but yeah, it was very uh, yeah. potent. But, but he, you know, it's kind of like it, he, uh, he had the humility. There's no thing about the English comedy. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, I'm smart as well. I'm not just silly. And, and uh, Canada and the USA uh, are freed from the need to prove to your audience that you have an intellect, but it's required. Mm -hmm. You have to be smart enough to do comedy. For yeah, that sure. Sake. People forget that Definitely. just if you're good, that means you're smart because you are right. thinking. You know, the 18 ways you shouldn't do it, you're picking the one that works. Yeah. So something's going. I've on. gotten a few reviews in my life that kind of ding me a little bit. Oh, he's just being silly. Yes. Yeah, as if any pick anyone out of the crowd. Be, now go, just be silly. You yeah, know? And, and so and, because I, it's because yeah. I've seen your shows. You know, you conduct that crowd, dude. You know, better than Hell any yeah. other comedian I've ever seen. It's a perfectly timed and, and it's a full, full show. But yes, which when when it looks easy, I think with Fardy it looked easy, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of focus, a lot of commitment, but it does, you know, so, but we don't need to know how it was made. It was just great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mike, what you were saying about second city, when he would commit, uh, he would get on me. And I think other people, like he wanted the exact same commitment. If he got a vibe that you weren't a hundred percent in a sketch, he was really into it. Yeah. So he's, he was taught, he's like, you get up there and you give it a thousand and you go to the crowd and you come in exploding into that scene. And so he had all these rules in his head and he would do them all. And if he caught someone uh, gold bricking, yeah. he'd be like, you know, he'd get on your ass about it, which I like. So that is the second city training. And a lot of that is the late Del Close, who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to, and, and did Chris, we had two big coaches in our life. One is Lauren Michaels and uh, the other one is mm -hmm. uh, Del Close, you know, and, uh, and one of the things I think we all kind of feel about Lauren is that he had a glossary of terms for that, which didn't have a glossary of terms before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. for sketch comedy, certainly there isn't a day I don't quote. Um, well, and you do too, Dana. I, I've, I've learned a lot from you. Definitely. I, I, I can't believe that. But at uh, this but, point, I think the student has become the teacher. Uh, <laughs> now the pupil. The student has the become teacher. the older students. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Lauren no, does I, have a lot of phrases and Lornisms, I call Mike, them. Mike, what know. are your Lornisms? I haven't heard them all. Do you have any? <laughs> well, the, the value of water is, is one that is a biggie for people have heard that. But I remember you telling me about that one. Oh, I went to his house. Time. Never forget the value of water as he's pouring water from like three feet away from the, you know, he yeah. was a great poor guy. He put that M cell light like three, three feet in the air and just like, hit the well, I've never been to anybody's house that was totally stocked, you know, and, and me and, neither. And Rose, yeah. you know? And he had like every kind of cheese, not just cheese. You know what I mean? And, mm. uh, he said, well, you know, come over to the house. Then he was like, uh, there's your thing. I'll I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I'm like, but well, what do I do tonight? Like, <laughs> you know, and there's no TVs or anything. So I'm like, no. Okay. So I just like walked around Amagansett, you know. And then uh, <laughs> the next morning, he's coming. He, he just had a massage, right? He's wearing a robe. Know, I, I had all the same experiences. And, yeah, and I was ahead. in the kitchen. I was by myself, and I was like, am I allowed to go into the the, the fridge? I'm starving. He goes, have you eaten? I said, no. Um, is there a, I said, no, no, just help yourself. And then he pours himself water and he goes, uh, do you drink water? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. He goes, there's nothing like water. And so I hadn't spoken to any human being for four years. Said, do you well, breathe? There's nothing like air. Do you breathe? Uh, I said, uh, <laughs> well, beer is like water in as much as uh, both of them are liquids. Right? And he went, rawr. <laughs> and, the and so I had them still light and uh I don't know, I found yeah. a, I found a pay booth in town and I called my brother Paul and was like, oh my god. And then uh on day three I had my meeting with him. Lauren <laughs> saying right is one of the funny things that he always does sort of He should have right. been a game show host. And the answer is Toronto, right. right. And the answer is <laughs> he could have well, been the other anyway. one is with, with um you know 
with Rob Lowe, we have tried to get, when we have dinner with Lauren, is to try to get a right, really, and a cool of it. Did I tell you this the last time I was here? I, no, that's, well, that's great. funny. So, <laughs> right is, it's boring. Yeah. Really mm-hmm. is something right. that is embarrassing and he's going to tell the next person that comes in the room. Yeah. And cool is, now you have to leave. So it's <laughs> right, really cool, right? <laughs> and there's one that's more. play. One more, I don't, yeah, you want to go in threes, but ex- uh, exactly is when you're giving him information he may not have heard, and then he, he claims it, I guess. So, you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I exactly. knew. I, I knew. So we're watching a hockey game once with this kid, and uh, when you've got a, pen, uh, a power play in hockey, you can't see the clock to see how much more of your power play you have. But the goalie watches – and when there's three seconds to go, he whaps his stick on the ground three times, one, two, three. And his son said, why is he whapping the stick? And Lauren said, uh, uh, well, he's frustrated they haven't scored. Right? And I said, well, no, actually, it's telling them they have three seconds to go because they can't watch the clock. And he went, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and no, no, Lauren, if you had known, you would have said there was three seconds to go. <laughs> uh. so, so you didn't know. <laughs> but I didn't. I said, well, you know, it's both. It's both because I didn't want to embarrass him. Oh, the kids are all grown up now. And Chris, w- Chris would always say to David, because they had such a unique relationship, uh, talk about don't tell Lauren. He was always yes. when he don't tell you, Oh yeah, grab yeah, grabs you really. I mean, David, don't no shh no. <laughs> but he loved Mike and Dana. Oh boy. He would like, fuck, they're fucking killing, dude. He just couldn't believe he even knew you guys. When he came on, who Chris? Because it was overwhelming for all of us. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. super overwhelming. Got there and he's, and it's just going. Oh my god! Because you guys were running the tables and well, he was, was just excited to be. He in was shit. in Wayne's World one and two, and yes. ca- cameos or whatever. And you know, I have his yellow security shirt from Wayne's World two. His brother just gave me. Oh, Isn't that really? That's so cool. Isn't that dude. crazy? Wow! Yeah. I just got it two weeks ago. It's super cool. I miss Chris. I think about him all the time. And, uh, you know, for me, there's a lot of Chris in Fat Bastard of uh, the sort of, oh, yeah. you know, my body's built for pleasure, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, you know, just trying to channel that uh, brilliance, you know what I mean? And, what? uh, he was always very, very nice to me. And I know this is going to sound super corny, but he was super, super nice to my mom. That always meant a lot to me. Well, yeah. he had a Midwestern vibe about him, and that is sort of humility and, and, and politeness yeah. and humbleness. We yeah. got to talk to his mom and brother and uh, got to know a little bit about his childhood. But he the party started when Chris came in the room, and if you'd say yeah. the mildest joke, and he would sincerely just belly laugh. Yeah. Yeah. so hard and he shared one thing with you mike he had more little superstitions about what he would touch but i remember you had one that you wouldn't go in the main doors of 8h you would no, just go never went in the main doors yeah I had was that a canadian flagpole at 30 rock yes chris hard. had a chris had a few of those things i didn't know about the canadian every time you came in you went bump 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 and then you came yeah. in the rock then i had to look at the number 22 on the lighting grid and when I hosted, they gave me that number off the lighting grid, and it's on my front door now. Oh, cuckoo! <laughs> Mike on uh, Tommy Boy, we were doing these hey, black sheep too. When we do, uh, he's first of all, you guys know he's very religious. Yes, and mm-hmm. so to combat his craziness, to scare him, he before each take, he'd spread his legs kind of wide, and then he'd pull up a pant leg on each side. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before a take. And I go, and so I was getting so sick of it that one day I go, you know, Chris, you're asking the devil to come out of hell. <laughs> and he goes, no, no. And I go, no. The good thing about the devil is I don't, he has to be invited into your life and you invite him. I don't invite him because I don't want the devil. And he goes, no, that's not what I'm doing. I go, you're knocking on the top of hell and pulling your leg and saying, come to me. And he goes, you shut the fuck up. Because he was so, <laughs> he was so superstitious. And then it scared him. So he's oh. like tentative about it. So funny. Kevin Neal, one of the funniest guys out there, had some overlap with Chris on the show. And we all know Kevin. And here's what he had to say. 
Yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. There you are with the baseball cap and all dressed up. <laughs> Is that real German? I kind of German. Or Austrian, right? You lived in Austria for a year, right? Kevin? I live with Hans over there. And they have a nine constant of the Schlugel der Fassen. Take your Schlaberschlossen <laughs> and make sure your Vikatuden is tatladen. I've been seeing that. I'm going to full start. Good God. <laughs> I got one. Emil is open. Has du Bruder? Nine. Abra covers why Swesta. That's, do you have any brothers? No, I have three sisters. You're like, well, it's not funny when I do it. The first time I saw Chris Farley, I remember I was in the hallway at Studio 8H and the elevator door opens up and out comes Farley. And he could not have looked more excited. And he's taking those kind of Farley steps and he's pulling his pants up like um, <laughs> Hollywood, yeah. motivational speech. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he looks at Mr. Nealon. You know, and uh, he walks down the hall. He was like a kid in the candy store. I forget who was with him, maybe his brother or two of his brothers, um, John maybe. And and then we just kind of got to know Chris. And we got to see how funny he was and how he would do anything for a laugh. And it's almost like he always needed to have you laughing. Yeah, he wasn't, yeah. he didn't feel like he was enough just by himself. And uh, I don't know where that came from, but I blame his parents. And, um, I blame but you. What, wasn't he also an explosive laughed, laugher? Like oh, he, he said, he's he a great said anything laugher. To, not even that funny. He was like, he's like, he a, go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was good at that. And, and he's around all these funny people. I think he did like, it's always great when a comedian is also a laugher, you know, cause it's very disarming mm -hmm. when someone laughs at your shit. That's more fun. Everything's fun. Yeah. I just kind of nod. Cause I don't want to give the other comedian confidence. Yeah. The worst is when somebody laugh uh, the worst is when a comedian laughs at his own jokes. That's kind of annoying. Cuz he's like a laugh track for you. He's letting you know where the laugh should be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only thing I noticed yeah. about Farley was when he laughed or he's excited, he jerk his head. He jerk his head quick to one side or the other or, or his head would go in like a turtle, you know? Yeah. His yeah. shoulders would He'd go up. Punch up. And yeah, but people loved him. They just loved they could they could feel his joy and his excitement, I think. And they were, they were there for the ride. And I know that you, Spade, and, uh, and Sandler and stuff, you knew exactly how to egg him on. Mm -hmm. You could get him to do stuff, you know, and have him turn on even higher volume. Because he loved once, it. Yeah, he loved getting laughs. But talking about the, 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 how he digressed in his you know, being at Saturday Night Live. I remember he was in the hallway at Sandler's dressing room and I was coming out and he was kind of being really loud and stuff. And I said, Chris, take it down a notch, take it down a notch. And we, somehow we got in the, the discussion about Belushi, John Belushi, because, you know, as we all know, he wanted to be just like John Belushi. Mm. He wanted to emulate him. And unfortunately he, he did at the end, especially, but um, he said, well, you know, Belushi, um, did a lot of drugs and drank and stuff. And I said, yeah, but look at how much funnier he would have been without all that. And look at how much more alive he would be <laughs> today. Really? Really? But I think things just didn't really, um, you know, sit in his head that long. He mm -hmm. didn't really retain a lot of stuff that were kind of good advice for him. But I've never laughed harder than at the Chippendales uh, dancer sketch mm -hmm. with Farley. I've never broken character on that show. But that was the one time I almost lost it. And I had to keep looking down at my clipboard because every time I looked up, that belly was sloshing back and forth like a pool on a boat. Oh, yeah. And then I'd look down at my clipboard and I look up again and I see all the stretch marks going back and forth. <laughs> and I, I just had to, uh, I had to look down and man, I was just, I was so relieved when it was over. For, for the people at home, Kevin was uh, what, one of the three judges. Was it you, Jan Hooks, maybe? Yeah, it was like American Idol. We were sitting behind a table, a long table, and it was me, Jan Hooks, and Mike Myers with a clipboard. <laughs> and Farley was auditioning to be a Chippendale dancer with just the bow tie on, the cuffs, no shirt, and leather pants, auditioning against Patrick Swayze, yeah. who was, you know, Rip fit. total six packs. Perfect all shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Farley gave it his all. And 
he was not going to walk away easily from his um, from his loss. And he kept dancing after he realized he wasn't in. And we finally had to say, "No, that's I'm sorry." I'm sorry, it's over. No, no. <laughs> Kevin, you're you're so funny in that because it those sketches need someone like you when you go, Barney, Barney, it's over. Like you're you're so straight <laughs> and Chris is kind of give eyeballs at you, like flirt with you, like flirting with the judges. How about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This? And they're like, you like this move? No, no. How about no, this no, move? No, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. How was that? Well, I heard in retrospect. Go ahead. I heard in retrospect that he was uh no, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard this about a year ago that he was a little apprehensive about agreeing to do that sketch because he was self-conscious. There's uh, two camps in that, right? I think mm -hmm, Bob yeah. Odenkirk has one thought on it. And, and Jim Downey did not think Chris was upset about it or felt humiliated by it. I never heard a word about I, it from Chris. I wouldn't think he would be because, you know, he just threw himself around. He, Like I said, he would do anything for laughs. Kevin, do you remember at read through? Did he? I can't remember. Did he get up and do that? I don't think so. Just so people know, we haven't mentioned this, but I don't know if you guys were there, but I, I don't know if it was a regular thing with Chris. But the writers' room on the seventeenth floor, at one a.m., and there's these double doors, uh, and it's where we have read through. And he just burst through, and he was completely naked, with kind of his legs crossed <laughs> and yeah. giggling. You know, mm -hmm. that was just Chris. So I, that's why I didn't think he'd be embarrassed about the Chippendale sketch because. He knew he he was moving in such a funny way and just crushing. So I would assume he was happy about that, but I, I never asked him. Well, he's always naked. Mm. And he would always walk in a room and then just pull his shirt off and pull his pants down. You go, what are you, what <laughs> what are you, are you doing? doing? <laughs> and if, Kevin, what about the move when he does something like that and you go, Lauren's really mad. And he goes, what? And then he changes his whole demeanor and his head goes back and he goes, no, 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 David, please don't, don't, no. Do you, do, you know what he does? <laughs> really? Yeah, really? really? No, really? Or how about a read through, you know, where he sat over there, uh, where you walk in. And I didn't know about OCD because when you walk in, we had shared that office. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he'd walk in, he would flip the light on and off and then. When he left, he touched the ceiling twice mm -hmm. or the top of the door jam. And I always thought he was doing it to be funny. And and when he would go to read through, when his was coming up, he'd pull his wallet out and he'd be staring at the script and he'd just casually lick each corner of each dollar bill and put it back in his wallet. And I, <laughs> we didn't know what OCD was. And on Tommy Boy, each take, he would lean over and pull up one side of his pant leg and then the other. And then... uh. And, but he didn't like, he wasn't seeing if anyone was looking, he was doing it. So, uh, just by rote, that's all he did. And, uh, yeah. I finally, I didn't know, we didn't know what OCD was. It wasn't anything back then. So I think that's what it was looking back. Probably was. I mean, Mike yeah. had a mild form of that. I mean, I was walking with Mike to go eight H on through the double doors. And then all of a sudden he just bolts left and goes, I don't go through the double doors. I don't know if that was for a particular season or whatever. Maybe it was more superstition than OCD. One of the things that really stands out for me with Chris was how agile he was and light on his feet mm -hmm. and coordinated. Like we would play basketball over at Riverside Park. And I was just astounded with how quick he was and just good with the fakes. And, you know, it, we even saw that in the skating rink at uh, 30 Rock when he was skating for one of those sketches. Just how a good athlete he was, even though he was on the plus side. <laughs> yeah the, he was such a great athlete Nancy yeah. Kerrigan sketch was uh was funny yeah. that was even funnier because he was good it's very surprising right yeah 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 very athletic basketball I don't know oh. if you know I know he played rugby in college I believe and he was a lot lighter but I wonder how how disappointed he was at his body size mm -hmm. because he really was a thin person inside that heavy body. Yeah. Well, was it the, you know. was, did you, did he talk to you about this, David, where he didn't think he could be as funny if he got yeah. to more of a normal weight? Yeah. You know? He was scared that, uh, it was less funny unless you were fatter because, you know, I think when he got all the way to Saturday Night Live to the top in quotes, you know, as that and, and every sketch, you know, they had a sketch called whale boy, you know, at second city. And that sounds a little rough, but you know, if you're, if you're that big and, uh, and you think then it goes away, you know, 
uh, something about it. You go, I can't lose it. But, you know, when he passed away, I still have his Tommy Boy jacket here. Uh, his family gave it to me and it's on my wall. And it's not that big. I mean, he was not, I think when he passed away, he was honestly 100 pounds heavier than during Tommy Boy. Uh, he just the last time I saw him really got big. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. That go ahead. was it. He just really got big, but he wasn't, he was bigger than me in Tommy boy, but I was probably 135 pounds. So it was a funny juxtaposition there, but in real life, he wasn't some super fat, you know? I remember the last time I saw him, I was at, uh, Brillstein gray management company. We both had the same managers. Mm. <clears throat> That's a big floor up there it's like the whole floor and i was walking by one of the conference rooms and i saw farley his back was kind of behind me or side i think he was smoking a cigarette and he had like a i think it was like a pink mohawk or his hair was dyed pink and he had a leather jacket on and he was kind of sweating Mm. and i didn't say anything to him because you know i just i for some reason i didn't stop and say hi to him but um that was the last time i saw him God, it's hard. It's, you know, it's funny and it's sad. I don't, I don't remember. I don't think the last time I saw him, I was in Aspen. Remember the HBO comedy festival? That's the last time I saw him. I sat next to him in that. It was a whole yeah. Saturday Night Live kind of reunion in like Aspen. Like a reunion, yeah. Did you go to that one, Kevin? I was, we were in bleachers. I did. Yeah, yeah I was there. Lauren we and went to, Chevy and the, yeah. We went to a dinner. So I see him and he's, uh, he comes over to go to a dinner, like let's say Steve Martin, Martin Short, Lauren, they're all having a big long table dinner. You guys might've been there. And they said, if you want to come down, we have two seats. And when Chris got to my room to pick me up, he was too fucked up. And I was like, oh, we can't go to this thing. But he goes, we got to go, we got to go. And so we're walking down there and all I'm thinking is, I hope it's like a cast party where everyone's just milling about and we can kind of blend in. But it was a sit down long table dinner. And they had our seats toward the middle. So we had to scooch down by everyone and we we're going to be trapped. And I go, Chris, keep going. We scooted down. We kept going, kept going out the other side. And then I took him through the kitchen. I go, let's go in the alley. I go, we can't stay there. We're not having a three hour dinner with all like our boss and all these famous people. We're going to get in trouble. So we went out and then I went home and he found, you know, he finds people that I wouldn't hang out with you know, and they're all like kind of sketchy. And he goes, I'm going to hang with these guys. I go, all right. So I went to lunch the next day and he's in line for this lunch place and he's with all these people, but they haven't gone to bed. So he's, he's talking to me and his eyes are sort of going back in his head and he's trying to focus. And I go, do you go to bed yet? And he goes, not yet. And uh, I go, oh, and then I think we got back to LA and that was sort of the beginning of, he lived near me, but we didn't see each other that much because he was always with a group of those guys, you know? And then it's, it's it's not as fun for me because he's he's either wasted or I don't want to hang with these guys. They're all sketch. And then you just get the news one day and I'm like, oh my God, yeah. But I don't remember. So you weren't very close to him. You weren't close to him near the end. Well, I mean, the last couple months it was, I ran into him and we had read this movie called The Tree and that was going to be maybe our next movie. And then he did Ninja and something else. And I just happened to run into him and he goes, hey, everyone just talks about Tommy boy. Uh, we got to do another one. This is stupid. What are we doing? Cause we weren't really fighting. We just were both doing our own thing. And, and he said, did you read the tree? And I said, yeah, I think that might, that might be a good one. And he goes, yeah. And then it never happened because it was just a few months later. So, but, but yeah, we were on, our terms were fine. It was just really the crowd he's with. I thought it would be a phase. Yeah. I think, uh, I think a lot of people like to latch on to someone that popular like that. And Chris may not have been that astute to the ass kissing that was going on. Mm -hmm. And he was getting so much praise and attention from them. It felt good. I'm not a therapist, but that's my, (laughs) that's my, you know, you know, when you walk mm -hmm. down the street, New York and people like Neil and Carvey, you know, they're eating outside. And when they'd go, they'd go, Hey, you know, Spade, have a drink. You know, they're just sitting right next to you and you walk by, Hey guys, if anyone said have a drink when we were walking together, he would stop and drink or he'd walk around and go yeah. sit. They go, Hey, sit with us. And then he would. And they're like, Oh my God, he's actually doing it. Oh, Hey, scoot over. And then he would just drink. And I go, all right, I'm going to take off because it was just crazy fans that were slapping his back and, 
uh, you know, no cameras back then or that would have been insane, but just like grabbing yeah. him and he got drunk with everyone and I go, uh, so you could just see it. He got so famous and he was so fun and I was lucky to hang out with him and my friends are always like, oh, bring him, bring him. He's so fun. He would leave messages for my friends and their voicemails and they'd fucking die loud. You know, it's great. So that's, that's the tough part. If you don't, that's hard for all of us to get through, you know, all the temptations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You become a wind up doll. Let's get the famous comedian high. And then, you know, yeah, they want to be the one to be funny. And, you know, so also Dana, when he, when he's in rehab, he, I'm sorry, Kevin, but when he's in rehab, everyone still wants to get him wasted. He's an AA and no one gives a fuck. They want to be the ones that are with him when he got fucked up, even when he wasn't supposed to. There's something well, weird about that. That's devious. Yes, Kevin. Yeah. I sometimes wonder what he would be doing now if he were still alive. Would he be like a huge, huge movie star doing all these crazy films? And, you know, what films would he have done instead of other people that, you know, prospered from it? And um, or would he still would he be canceled? <laughs> you know, would he be somewhere in, a, you know, in another job or something? Yeah. Road less traveled. I don't I don't know, you know. But yeah, Dana wonders how fat he'd be. I weigh everybody. I think about celebrity net worth and actual weight. <laughs> in the in the in the days of my thousand pound sisters, Farley weighed about two fifty. You know, it's like they're like this guy was obese, and you're like he really wasn't. I mean, I've seen there's we've made bigger since. Harvey always checks out the. Uh, Celebrity net weight. <laughs> yeah. Online. She's right next to worth. You just put worth and you go right back to weight. And then I go celebrity lean mass versus body fat percentage. That takes a little longer. I checked you guys earlier today and I'll email you the results. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 